Hey guys, it's great to have the three of us together to chat. Yeah, it's awesome. I've been a fan of both of your channels for years. Same here. It's an honour to be chatting with you guys. So, what have you guys been playing recently? I just started playing through Mass Effect again, in anticipation of the Legendary Edition coming out. Nice! I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends lately. The new season just started and it's really fun. I've been playing a lot of Hitman 3 recently. It's been great to finally see the conclusion to the World of Assassination trilogy. Oh yeah, Hitman 3 was amazing. The level design and replayability are off the charts. I haven't played it yet, but it's definitely on my list. So what's been your favourite video to make recently? Uh, I had a blast making my teardown video. It's such a unique and creative game. For me, it's got to be my latest Fallout New Vegas video, where I beat the game on a YOLO run. That's amazing! Congrats! For me, I've been really proud of my video on how to improve your aim in first-person shooters. That thing I do that, all the that's, time. that's a great topic. It's always important to work on your aim, especially in competitive games. Yes, definitely. Well, it was great chatting with you guys. <laughs> Keep up the amazing work on your channels. Same to you guys. It's been awesome chatting with you. Agreed. We should definitely do this again sometime. And scene. Hello, everybody, and welcome to... The not chat GPT written part of the podcast. <laughs> Why does it think I'm still working on Fallout New Vegas YOLO? It was seven years ago. Why is the thing? I have no idea what its data set for what we're like is, because obviously the stuff we're doing is not written down for the most part. And yeah. it's not like they're skimming video. Well, um, it could it could pull metadata from like all the videos to figure out what you were playing in what order, roughly. Like it could estimate what what not a current ongoing series would be. Well, like my, hit, my Hitman 3 any, series. Any competent, but any competent AI should be able to look yeah. at my channel and figure out, okay, it would be reasonable for that person to suggest, yeah, but, oh, but, yeah, I'm working on the next episode John, of Oblivion. It, but it, it doesn't Google you. That's not what it does. <laughs> you. <laughs> no, that's well, surely it should do. Like, that, that's like, you know, surely it should. That's well, a fucking good starting point. on a computer going, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, no. shit. A lot of these data sets, right, a lot of them, are, the data set they're pulling from is sometimes years old. Mm. Could, could you tell? John, how was it playing through Mass Effect again in anticipation of the Legendary Edition coming out? Well, it was more recent than bloody Fallout New Vegas YOLO, <laughs> so, you know, it did, it did quite that. well in that regard. Legendary Edition was only last year, wasn't it? No, it was like three years ago now, I'd say. No, it can't be. Yes, it definitely was. Hang yeah, we'll on. Say, Hang on. I will say, I did, you know what I looked at the other day? You know the first episode of the podcast we did? We recorded Okay, it, it was two years, years ago. fine. <laughs> I'll take two yeah. years. Admittedly, my sense of time has gone. I, I, I was talking about something yesterday. I'm like, this happened five years ago and it happened two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's completely... Well, I'm gonna actually wait. I mean, Chuck, in I'm... two years, we'll be closer to 2050 than the year 2000. Yeah, right. and we're still right. no fucking sign of uh, flying cars. Opening for <laughs> and honestly, if we did a flying cars, Elon would probably be the first to make them. So I'm not fucking getting. Yeah, that but he'd thing. build like fucking sky tunnels for them to fly down, and then just fucking be so you're just in a tunnel in the sky. Everything's hovering, but you just don't know it. That's the thing sci-fi missed. Like, they said, oh, the future is going to be flying cars, but it missed that they're going to routinely crash. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't trust the average person with a regular car, let alone <laughs> a flying car. Oh shit, I was gonna say, uh, thanks to Lauren Smeethy on the No Keep subreddit for uh, asking ChatGPT there to write an episode of the podcast. I, I like that. Like a reference to the No Keep subreddit, it actually feels, feels very 2014, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was also written down. This is all, this is ChatGPT2, this whole next bit. Yeah. Speaking, sorry, one of the comments, this Silent Bandit said, This reminds you of that Simpsons episode where Marge makes itchy and scratchy all nice. <laughs> Lemonade, please. <laughs> Anyway, I would never start the Hitman talk, so fuck that. Fuck AI, it's useless. It's true. Here. I mean, I like the AI just because it made you talk about Hitman. <laughs> that thing, that Wait, thing that you famously wanted to stop me and Matt talking about. Do you prefer ChatGPT me to the real me? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he seems very polite. He seems like, a, you know, a very nice, well put together young oh, man yeah. who isn't telling me to fuck off or shut up. Well, fuck or making shut fun up, of, right? Or <laughs> making fun of me because I may have made some slight miscalculations as to when Starfield was coming out. What, March? 
March. So it turns out it's not coming out in March. No, it's definitely not because no, of it's, how it's, video it's games coming, work. It's coming out in 09, 06, 23. So 9th of June, here we cocking come. 9th of June, I'm there for yeah, it. I'm so excited. June. I saw that That's and went 9th soon. of June. And now we hang on. Gonna come out. Fuck, do I have to Google? Oh, no, it's September. And then anyway, it's going to be delayed another time. Don't worry about it. It's going to be, I think, like a November release. I'm calling it now, November I release. I mean, it's already delayed about a year. I feel like they've they they've got to be willing to do it this time properly in September, surely. Like I think Say at this that. point, even even if it doesn't work properly in September, they'll just release it anyway. Ah, because that didn't hurt Cyberpunk at all. <laughs> well, anyway. the thing is, the thing is, you approach Bethesda games with a different mindset. Like you know, sometimes I see like the discourse around Bethesda games, like, oh, what if they release this game? Like you know, they've delayed it, so they can you know polish it. It's not bugs. Like, why do you think I play Bethesda games, you stupid <laughs> fucker? Like, I want it to functionally work. Like, New Vegas was too far in that direction when it originally yeah. came out. But like, I want my Bethesda games to be just a little bit buggy, and a little bit broken, and a little bit unbalanced. Like, I don't want it to be over polished. Like yeah. that that would be bad. I What's want for, my what, I what, want my games to go bananas. And like, you know, I shoot a person and they just fly into space because they walked into a log and the log physics catapulted no, the, them the out of the world is, space. Starfield, I want that to happen. Not gonna happen. Starfield that's not gonna happen because it's gonna it come out buggy and instead of someone pinging into space, they're gonna ping off. The game's gonna go, Oh my god, they're in actual space and then it's gonna fucking load you into space. <laughs> it's and then there's gonna into actual space. Yeah, it's gonna go through the load zone, and then you're just floating in a load zone with like a like build and fucking Catman and like Bill the Catman's there is like, excuse me, sir. You're standing on a launch pad and you're like, there's no rocket here. I'm going to get a space in the distance. Just running at you is a fucking troll from Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's, what I, here's how I, if I, like, uh, the thing that I'm going to make me realize that Starfield actually is my, my game of the year is going to be if I can basically manage to like push an NPC onto the front of my ship, get in my ship, see them out the window, then just take off and just fly to another planet and they're just walking up and down the front of a spaceship in front of like, you know, my little view window. And then they're just land and they're on a new planet. And you can just deliver people from planet to planet by carrying them on the outside of your spaceship. That if you can do something like that, then that, that, yeah, it needs to be something like that. Or if you catapult someone into space, once they hit space, they just keep going and they can hit another planet. You just run into them on another planet. Shit it's... like that will be, yeah, that's how that's the level of buggy I want my Bethesda games to be. I don't want them to polish that out. I don't want them to patch it out. There's a reason they never patched out how the fucking giants catapult you into space in Skyrim. Because it was funny. Yeah, that's funny bugs are fine. I can't beat Skyrim because the Civil War quest is bugged. And when an need... NPC spawns, the entire game crashes. That's not even the main quest. The main quest is the dragon I shit. I beat the main quest. I want to go and do the Civil War thing. But if I the go Civil into Civil War a, a thing, it's incredibly disappointing. Game. It doesn't go anywhere. It just means the police wandering around are wearing blue versus red or no, vice no, versa. I, I will fully defend Daniel here because when I played Skyrim as well, and this is still prevalent, and I was able to fix it when I was, when I was on PC, but I got to this Dwemer Fortress that's like a bottleneck for the actual main quest. Yes. And there's supposed to be a guy dead Oh, in yeah, the I got the same thing, yeah. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, talk to the man. The guy hadn't spawned. He yeah. wasn't there. And then it's like, take the key off the man's body. And I'm like, there's not a man. <laughs> there's no yeah. man. I can't open the door. And I was able to just open the door. But then I had to advance the quest because the quest was take the key off the man's body. There was no... So I had to do a lot of cosmic commands to get it to work. But if I... Yeah, you had switch, to set the quest would, stage, yeah. If that happened on, on the switch, I would have just went, all right. I guess I'm not playing this anymore after like 50 hours. Yeah, okay, that, that's a bad bug. Yeah, that's a bad bug. People just yeah. wandering around in space, that's a good bug. There's there's different types. And I'm hoping Bethesda realizes this when they polish up Starfield, that we want to keep the good bugs in because they're funny. Uh, on that note, I think it's very important to mention that since we last recorded a podcast, Double Fine Psychodacy has come out. Which is a... It's the 30... first time I've heard of this thing's existence, but all right, I'm quickly going to educate myself as fast it's as possible. It's a 32-part documentary about the seven-year entire creative process of building Psychonauts 2. From basically, I want to make Psychonauts 2, to here is Psychonauts 2. It's a 22-hour documentary on Jesus the entire Christ, you're creative not wrong. progress. It's, it's 32 episodes, and yes. mostly they're about half an hour. But then there's a feature-length finale... It's also a feature-length film in the middle of it. There's literally... Episode 26 is like, hey, go watch the, the film. Right? Okay, that, I've, they I've actually... not watched any of this, but I'm pretty confident an editor could have given this a pass to get the, these down to 10 what, minutes each. Seven years to one day. 
I feel John, like, but sorry, no, it is you, a... you of all fucking people, John, miss out on <laughs> seven hour long videos a week. Should not be sat no, there. Yeah, but... John's no, like, no, why no. isn't it seven years long? I want to watch it in real <laughs> no, time. No, that's not true. I record for like fucking seven hours, then I just toss six and a half hours of it out, and we're left with a nice, like, smooth, nice, tight forty minutes. Yeah, but yeah, that, yeah but this is actually important stuff, John. You know, this is more than. <laughs> You going, oh, look, I'm in oblivion and I don't think the opening view is very good. You know, it's, it's, it's... <laughs> you're never going to get over the fact that I was unimpressed by generic lake with generic fucking island compared to generic, here is the devastation of America. And by the way, there's the White House and the Washington Monument slowly emerging out of the brightness as your eyes adjust to seeing the outside for the first time in your life. Yes, Fallout 3's opening's fucking much, much better than oblivion's. Fuck you. Boring. <laughs> what I don't I mean, get is why they why the fuck right. they were making it that way around. Like literally, all they needed to do was you know say, oh yeah, the dungeon goes under the lake, and have you emerge the other side of the lake, and then you could emerge and see the Imperial City as you step outside. Because when you step outside, you want to see the most interesting landmarks, so you go towards it. And what in a the, uh... they have you facing with your back to the interesting landmark, which is where you're supposed to go. What which was is the draw weird. distance by default when it launched, though? Oh, you know what? I don't fucking know. It probably was quite... not. Yeah. It probably was... not great, especially on console. Well, it came on console much later. But I remember it was the game where, like, if you see that tree, you can go to that tree. It was that. That was, like, the line. From... I, do, I do have an Xbox. Got a original Xbox you. copy of Oblivion next to me. <laughs> That's a weird thing to have. I've got, um... Gang Beasts figures next to me, and that's it. I've got a bag of crisps that have gone off, but I'm still going to eat them because I'm a classy <laughs> man. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've got an original Xbox just sitting in a flipping box next to me because I bought it exclusively to play Fallout Brotherhood of Steel. That was a, <laughs> that was a bad purchase. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So I was mentioning Psychodicy because in the, in the last episodes, they're going through sort of like what their bug process is. And they're looking at the bugs and they kind of have to decide if it's a, a known shippable, which is like they know it exists and they're shipping it, or if it's, uh, you know, if it's something that has to be fixed, like it impedes player progress or something. And they have to kind of go through all the bugs and say, is it worth dedicating the time to this? Hmm. And there are like there's stuff like a, uh, in the in the old body, the early cutscenes, like the guy where the one of the bad guys, I suppose, from the first game goes storming off. And a, a chair goes absolutely flying, like, from off screen, and it's really funny. That is a bug that they kept in because it was funny. Um, and there's another one where, like, a chair just drops out of the sky, and uh, it, it's one thing. And Tim Shank's like, no, ship it! Ship it or you're fired! <laughs> and they're like, it doesn't fit. It's like, just add a voice line with someone going, oh, I missed them. And then ship it. <laughs> it just gets so into just this bug. But it's it's kind of, it's really interesting because, like, uh, if you play video games and you don't make video games, there is a lot of ignorance on how video games are made. Because it is a big, scary credit price, especially with a big team. Like, you can understand how you'd put a small game together yourself, but when you're dealing with a team, you know, in, in, in double or triple, maybe even fucking quadruple figures, the management required to do that is it genuinely horrific. Like, it's fascinating. I cannot recommend this documentary enough. It is my... Well, I, the two best documentaries about gaming is Double Fine Psych Odyssey and Double Fine Adventure, which is the one for Broken Age. Because they just go in... This one just goes so deep because it's a massive game. Yeah, and Broken Age was a relatively small game, presumably, in terms of the team. Yeah, because Broken Age is interesting because they, they basically wanted to make a Flash-level game because it was like $400,000 uh, was their original thing and it ended up getting $3.3 million. So that rapidly changed how they were making the game and they kind of didn't know what to do with the money and all their faults and everything and all the fuck-ups they made along the way are all in that documentary. And in this one, they know what they're doing and they're like, it's just going to be great. And their publisher is Starbreeze and Tim has to kind of stand in front of everyone and go, hey, so yeah, Starbreeze is being investigated uh, and we don't know where the CEO is anymore. So we don't know what's going on. And there's discussions of burnout. There's people who leave. There's some people who are bad fits. It's a very... Unlike the first one, which was kind of like a whole bunch of people going, oh, we're not prepared for this. Let's be really good. And sort of the stresses that come with that. This is kind of like the management went wonky, not through maliciousness, just through sort of communication kind of fed up. Basically, the person they hired to run the project doesn't fit with Double Fine, just doesn't really fit with them at all. 
Um, it was the same guy who made uh, Bioshock 2. He was the lead on Bioshock 2. It was like, I think, his biggest thing for this. And they brought him in to sort of have somebody who knows how to do a bigger game. But the way he did everything wasn't really how Double Fine works and kind of the conflicts that that causes. And it's just this absolutely fascinating documentary about sort of failures in leadership um, and sort of still managing to get an incredible game out. And it just kind of, if you really don't know how video games are made, you have to watch this thing because you watch this and at the end you go, how the fuck did Cyberpunk come out in such a, you know, what was going on at Cyberpunk? What, what were all of these, like, and you, you know, you can go, you can look at all the games, like games that come out absolutely flawlessly. You know, you're like, Jesus, what's happening? Like, and it makes you, I want us to see all of it. I want to know how all these companies operate because this is a, a, a kind of a relatively <laughs> small team making like a double A game. And it's so hard. And there's so many pieces. And it's so heartbreaking. I mean, especially if you've been a Double fan, uh, double Fine fan for a long time like me, you'll really just... It's like watching... Because a load of like, the older people who've been there for like 15 years leave because they're kind of just like done with how it's being worked. And Tim is like struggling to get money into the company because, and that becomes his focus because Starbreeze collapses. So it's kind of just... it's. No one's really steering the ship for a, for a chunk in the middle. And it's just, it's incredible television. It, it, I, I, it, there should be awards flung at this fucking thing because it is one of the best documentaries I've ever seen in my entire life. Is it on YouTube? Yeah. Is it free that. on YouTube? Free on YouTube. Absolutely Double completely free. Fine. What's it called? Psych Odyssey. If you just go Psych on the Double Odyssey. Fine website, uh, the, the yeah. go YouTube page, it's right fucking there. No, by the time you finish podcasts. watching all the two episodes, Psychonauts 3 will be out. It's 22 hours, you uh, bug. That's not uh, a lot of time. John, with all due fucking respect, it's got to be less time than watching the Oblivion series that you haven't even finished yet. So fucking get off its back, John. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not even a jab. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just such a weird criticism from you of all people. <laughs> it's too it just long. It's like a documentary. John, the episodes are between 34 <laughs> minutes and 47 minutes, which is your average video length. It's actually true, yes. The yeah. view count is about 30k views a video, which is about <laughs> your average broadly. view amount. Bit less, and I, but it, this is actually oh, good. Oh fuck! Am I Tim Schafer in disguise? <laughs> oh god, that'd be. <laughs> that's why you've been eggs all these years. <laughs> it's oh like Tim, my like, god! Got to run a YouTube channel instead. No one will know. Never seen did Tim Schafer in the same room at the same time. I mean, I, I've been in the same. I've. I, me and Tim Schafer did a book. Actually, <laughs> actually, it was just John. Actually, John, I actually think I have. Well, when have I been in a room with Tim Schafer? <laughs> at EGX Rest. Oh, yeah. I don't think Tim would go to an EGX. No, he was at EGX Res. Because I, rem I remember, because before pa before it came out and you were trying to, and I was trying to find out how the fuck to contact him. Um, and I it turns out he was, was just rug rugby no, tackling him in public. I, I found that he was at Give me a business card, you fucking to. twat. And I was trying to, like, talk to people, be like, is there any way I could just sit down? I just, but I just equally felt like just a random man turning up and be like, good evening, Tim. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Will you write a full word for my boss's book? <laughs> I feel like he'd say yes, though. I feel like but he, he would. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm in the documentary. Well chuffed. Oh, I did you yeah, get up every oh, week? Oh, that's why we're like, talking, spending so much time oh, plugging the documentary. I see. I'm in it very. I was because I was watching it. Like I'm, a, I'm like talking to Tim at this point, and I know because like when I when um, Psychonauts two came out on launch day. You got an option for the different versions of the game. You can get Steam code or whatever code. And I got the one from Good Old Games because I'm like, it'll be DRM free. Uh, and I always prefer DRM free versions of games. They last forever. Um, so I got uh, so I got the code. And I was like, well, if it's DRM free, surely it'll work now. Because like the actual game's not going to go. Like they gave the codes out early, but the game was going to go live when everybody else got access to it. And I went, surely it'll just work now. And it did. So I was like the first person to be streaming it. And like <laughs> Double Fine were in the chat being like, Hey, how did you do this? <laughs> What's going on? But also, they're like chatting to me really sportive. They're like, oh, it's the thing. So that was, yeah. But the, it, on the launch party, you could briefly see that the, on the big screen that they have in their uh, main conference room, you can see they're watching my stream, which I was very oh, happy oh. about. It's always nice with smaller indie games where the dev actually shows up into a stream of it. That's always lovely. I love that. I love that yeah. so much. And when so I get nice excited about it as well, they're like, oh my God, you're playing my game. What do you think? Tell me everything. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. I swear there's a dev for, I can't remember what game it was, but they, I, it was like a, a game that was like partially online and they kind of came in and ended up fucking with the game repeatedly. Oh, yeah, it was the truck one. It was the exploding truck. Cluster truck. Cluster truck. <laughs> exploding trucks. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they could they, just they fuck they with the game. Of, they start, it wouldn't even they were in chat. It just appeared. It was like, hello, Doki, we're watching you. And everything just started changing. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Excellent. That's slightly terrifying. Yeah, it was slightly terrifying, but I kind of loved it. No, it I love shit like that. I think that's, that's a really fucking silly. Um, but yeah, no, I love the... Uh, yeah, I've, it's, it's, I, make, I get a Christmas card from Double Fine every year, which makes me so fucking happy. Well, like, loop de doo it turns up every time after Christmas because it's coming from like fucking San Francisco. But I do love, I love the, they're the best people. And it's, this is why I love them, that, that sheer transparency. Like if you watch this documentary, you're not going to go, wow, they're all fucking, you know, you get those like really like highly editorialized, everyone was a fucking saint, this project was flawless documentaries. This isn't one of those. This is fucking brutal. I mean, have you watched, because uh, what's that, what's, are they, a no clip? Yeah, did because uh, I have I haven't admittedly I haven't actually watched a documentary because as much as I'm always interested in these things, every documentary about these things and including that psychonauts one is like seventy billion hours long and I do not have the twenty two mental... hours. It's a day. Just do what I did and watch it all over a ah, weekend. That's on my side. Fuck you. No, I I think shut that's up, a valid... Captain. No, long videos. I, I think it's a valid length for it, but I equally I don't even watch TV because TV is too long. I'm like, no, movie. It's fucking three you hours have... maximum. Right, Matt, right Matt's just deal. on tick. Matt's just on TikTok. It's like, fuck it. This one's over twenty seconds. Skip. I mean, we're joining TikTok. We're joining TikTok. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Um, we, Matt, you watch twenty hours of Picard during series one and two, hoping for it to be good, whereas I'm giving you twenty two hours of something that is definitely good all the way through. Yeah, but like, you watch Picard die and turn into an android. Yeah, but it's a difference because I watched that weekly when it came out, and it wasn't this big. Well, what's this of- weekly then? I don't know. I- Oh my god, you're like one of those people that complain when I launched an entire complete series in one go. <laughs> yes! That, it's validly. A match. Well, tough! Just watch it as a way. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> How old, Christmas Day, here's a Planet Coaster complete series. God, the other <laughs> fucking day, I was I was in my YouTube backend and I, I, I'd archived the Fallout 4 streams I'd done, and they were all there, and I was gonna, I wanted to make them all unlisted to put them in a playlist to help sort them. And I accidentally made them all public and it was like 70 of them. Oh, God. I got a lot of screenshots of people on their fucking subscriptions page. It just filled with fucking like <laughs> 70. I just thought it must have been what it felt like when your video, when that fucking all came out all at once. I don't like binging. I'm not a fan of binging. It didn't I'm come glad- out all at once. If you watch the first episode, it was scheduled. So if you watch the first no, episode, yeah, when it ended, the second one came out. And you go, oh, second one. And then, like, some people watched it all in one go. Uh, look, I, I watched, I just very, like, I watched the only TV shows I've been watching are, I mean, I've been watching Picard, the new one, which, oh, finally. But equally, it's kind of annoying because I could have just skipped the first few seasons and I wouldn't be missing out. <laughs> yeah, the first two seasons are rough. It's like they don't exist, basically. Third one's fucking great. But I talk so- about this on my other podcast, Too Fast 10 Forwards, with Mike Bithell creator of games such as Thomas Was Alone, John Wick Hex, and the upcoming Tron Identity. And somehow, it's almost impressive how bad of a microphone that Mike has. Mike has a bad <laughs> mic. Like, Here's my, I'll tell you this, right? He, he does another podcast with fucking, like, Troy Baker. No, uh, this is it. A lot of Pierce and someone else this. who does music. Wait, no, but his, his fucking microphone is way better in that setup, right? <laughs> he just doesn't put the effort in, and rightly so, because that's wow. not the kind of podcast you want to put the effort into. Are we still I'm asking for effort. by the way, because I bet I could get a few grand if I just mentioned NordVPN right now, as long as I get just re- email them ahead of time. <laughs> NordVPN! Hang on, which one's on my desktop? It's NordVPN! Yeah, I like NordVPN. I never forget to... Shut them. up, we're not getting paid yet. For fuck's <laughs> sake. I don't, Matt was like, here's a password for it, and I lost it. So We have, uh, to, but... like, threaten, we have to threaten to like plug a different VPN if they don't give us money. I don't know a different... Atlas VPN. VPN. What's the Atlas, app? if you want everything to look like Persona, use Atlas VPN. We could probably <laughs> goof on could them off against each other. Just basically, yeah, just write an email to one of them and CC in the other, see if we can get a bidding war going on. Uh, you know what? Let's stop talking about this now, and let's talk about something that's near and dear to my heart. Sir Raid Shot. Shadow Legends. Oh, God. Which is... Uh, oh, actually... do, you know what the, do you know what the current sponsorship trend is? What? The current Microwave meals. What? 
Wow. Microwave meals that are being branded oh, are these like, as, like those health like, foods? Health, health, healthy meals where it's just it just looks like shit in a tub. Where it's no, like, it's oh yeah, this is just generic protein gruel. No, you can eat instead of food. But it makes you slim and muscly. And, no. and let's don't ask how it tastes. It's not even that, it's literally just I've actually it's got I've actually made food. one of those microwave meals and I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a bite of it now. This is the meat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. it's good. Uh, it's a good gag. Um. You, know what, you, know, yeah, you know what I'm sad about? These, these video game documentaries you're talking about, like that all of them obviously come almost entirely from an era when we were already into we can patch games. So if we fuck it up, you know, if we want to, not saying everyone could be bothered, but if we want to, we can patch it later. Whereas no. I think possibly the more interesting era of game development was, uh, okay, once the information's on the CD or on the cart, that's it. It's, I mean, it's gone. If we fucked it, it's fucked forever. Which I'm brings say... me to my, fa my favourite story that I'm never going to let them forget. Rockstar shipped an uncompletable game. In their uh -huh. early days, back when they were called DMA Design, they shipped Space Station Silicon Valley and it could not be I mean, completed because the finished version that they sent to shops and all around the world did not have collision detection around one of the items you needed to collect to complete the game. Which was why back in those days every game had secret, like, you know, combinations of buttons you could push on the start screen to open up levels or the final level or complete the game. They weren't there because, you know, that was just a cult thing. They were there because on the off chance, the game broke. That you had to I mean... have a backup, which is why, you, and if, you know, they could just never announce them or they could announce them years down the line. Like, years after it came out, Rare revealed the GoldenEye had button combinations you could press to unlock all the cheats. But they didn't need to bother releasing them earlier than that because the cheats worked correctly. GoldenEye was a well put together game. But they were all in back in those days. Like every game that's had a huge number of complex dev cheat tools. codes just in case it was broken. That's I mean, just that's dev tools. Like that's Bethesda's how they engine. accessed, that's how they tested and did dev tools to things. Like in the original Sonic, up, see, down, see, left, see, right, see, A, start, whatever the fuck it was. Gives you access to dev tools and you can swap Sonic out for different sprites like rings and the boxes and stuff and place them on the level and then play the level. And you could get like, you get, you no clip around everything and you can fly around everything. That's just in the base Sonic game. Mm. And back in those days, obviously, all PC games basically seemed to be constructed out of notepad files. So it was incredibly easy to mod. The wow. modding scene was, can you go into a notepad file and change some numbers? Yes, I can. Brilliant. Now games are determined to, like, be shy and they're hiding behind little veils of file extensions. I don't know what the fuck they are. Oh, and, like, my modding is now God. complicated. You know what I fucking did last week, right? My Windows installation died, but it's just, if we're going to be just skim on all past all that i had to reinstall windows and then the xbox games folder that windows makes for like game pass games they encrypt and you can't delete it cool and but Sounds i couldn't right. make it i have no idea make... what the implication of that is i'm no, not technical because, to know whether that's good no, because, i don't know whether to say great that's really good that's really no. reassuring versus oh no you're fucked because what, what that means what, what like, emotional a... response are you looking for here matt no it means on a new pc right where, like Steam, you just put it in the folder and it goes, there's all the games. Steam goes, oh, there's all the games. Ah, cool. Xbox, it goes, no, I can't use that drive at all, ever. I can't put games on that drive because there's already a, a, a folder there for games. And I went, okay, I'll just delete the folder. Windows does not delete the folder. You know what the solution to that actually genuinely was, after a lot of research? I had to install Linux! <laughs> <laughs> and then go into Linux and then delete the folder in Linux because Linux doesn't give a fuck. But Microsoft Windows does. And it was the stupidest goddamn workaround to a ridiculous... And I, I was doing this, and oh, God, I hate modern gaming. I hate modern gaming. I hate modern gaming. I, I, just I will, I will say... operating systems to delete a folder, you know? <laughs> that, I've, come, I've come across that, especially with, like, Flight Simulator and stuff, when it was just oh, would not download fuck and me. fuck that shit anyway. But I will say that PC games back in the day did used to get patches. Or PC Even games, three, yeah. Yeah, PC games, because you'd get the patch on... Uh, a, a disc attached to the front of your favourite magazine. And if you were playing a game and there was a patch out for it, and you didn't have like access to the very early internet, you had to go and find out which magazine had the specific patch for your game on it. And I There's remember something very charming about that that I do miss. Along with yeah. how generous demos used to be on gaming oh. magazines. Well, on that fucking note, God, there's That's a good demo too. out. Whoa, oh, I had some fun with a demo this week, Resident Evil 4. Oh, yeah, I heard about, about this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not doing, I want to go into it fresh, so I, don't, I actually don't want to play the demo for that because I want to go into that whole game completely fresh. Cool. So I know you avoided it. that demo, but I've heard good things. I, I'm glad I played the demo because I'm definitely not buying the full game now. 
at all. It's because you're. A, it, it's because you because he's a pussy. Not because it's bad. It's absolutely, because I'm a pussy. That is, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take that. Uh, yeah, I, it's horrifying. It's like legitimately a horror game now. Like uh, the only thing I will say, I don't want to spoil too much, John. But the first shack you go into, you know, where there's like a dude in a room, and then you go. Oh upstairs. yeah, I've, I've I've seen like that first trailer. That now there's like a, a dark underground basement or something, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and there's just loads. It's the it's all been expanded, and then the other other bits have been shrunk that didn't quite work. It's been very interestingly changed. I like yeah. them, um, I, I like them good. doing I'd that. I'd rather have that than just make. a remaster because yeah. there's no point to remaster because the game aged perfectly fine. It was still completely playable. Like the, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it because I like the fact that, you know, they take it's, it's basically like, you know, a completely different take on it. I liked, say, the Resident Evil 2 remaster. I thought that was brilliant. Like, I do like a bit of psychological horror. This sounds like it might be maybe a bit much for me, potentially. We'll see. But like... I liked Resident Evil 4 being a big, dumb, campy adventure. Yes. And I'm, I'm kind of sad that that's gone, and I don't know whether that means the magic's not going to, you know, strike twice. It's not me. gone. I'm going to say this now. It's absolutely not gone. Also, um, it's, oh, it's, not, it's... So what you're saying is it's, it's, a terif- it's a terrifying, horrifying, gory nightmare that's also a campy, fun adventure. Yes. Like, cut, cut, you know, can we just insert, you know, the, all, all the kids on the Simpsons itching scratchy panel going, oh yeah, me, that sounds great at this point, because it does sound like we're just doing that bit right now. Well, it's, it, the, for, I've only played the demo, but the my favourite dumb line from the whole thing is that a lot of the dumb lines have survived. Yeah. So you have those weird campy sort of lines, but yeah. also with the horrific tension, and I think the juxtaposition of them works kind of a lot better. That's interesting. So when it, it feels, when you're playing through it, it feels like you're going, oh dear God, oh dear God, and I'm getting all those oh dear God feelings that I used to have. Because that, that that village opening yeah. was the tensest thing in that game. Like that really set the tone for that game. And the way that it, it that still feels exactly the same. But then when everybody leaves, he goes, where'd everybody go? Bingo. And you're like, what year is oh, this? Oh, the bingo line survived. The Great. bingo line survived. It got a cheer from chat when I, <laughs> when I get it, hit it. The um, thing is, like, the, yeah. what's, what is easy to forget is if you if you've not like also you know played say well what used to just be in the PS2 version Ada's separate ways campaign though I think it is in the PC version, uh like it actually is important to the plot that Leon's a big loudmouth idiot because yes. part of the entire plot of the game is Ada basically is helping you because she spotted that Leon's a giant human wrecking ball who just likes drawing a huge amount of attention to himself and thus she kind of follows him around because he's very useful for drawing all the aggro at him so that she can sneak around to the shadows because he's a giant <laughs> dumb wrecking ball of attention so yeah. and that that's why she's that's why you run into Ada multiple times because she's sort of following you around nearby because she knows that Ada's f- sorry that Leon's fucking useful to her yeah. which I think is just a, an amazing like recontextualization of the game to get after it. Well, why was Ada in that game? Oh, she was literally using Leon as a giant foghorn to draw enemies away from her. That's amazing. It is, yeah. Uh, I, I think So he needs know... to be an incredibly loudmouth idiot who runs around doing dumb one-liners, repeatedly calling up the boss on the phone and making dumb quips to them because he's supposed to be getting their attention, Ooh. which I think is marvellous. I, I think uh, there is something that is missing. The phone call, you know, your sort of Metal Gear Solid 3, well, Metal Gear Solid codex screen type phone calls that Oh, happen. shit, are they gone? They're gone. Where's um, Hunnigan? We need Hunnigan. Bring back oh, Hunnigan, you fuckers. The woman who is, uh, you know, the 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 cyber ops of the whole thing. Yep, Hunnigan. Uh, yeah, she she's just in cutscenes. They just cut to her, and you get like her hanging around in the base and stuff. She's like properly like actually there. Okay, this worries me because if we if we don't get the dumb phone calls, then how do we get dumb exchanges? Like your right hand comes off. I mean, like you, those were all on the phone. They might still do phone calls. They, they do, might just not be in the demo. Yeah, but the, the phone calls are there. But the, instead of <laughs> no, just saying, they literally just go and find like a little phone in the castle. <laughs> just call up Salazar. Hey, Salazar, it's me again, you fucker. Stop of, calling me. This is weird. Instead of just seeing a screen with two static images on it, they are fully. You've got you know Leon <laughs> talking on the thing, and you've got her back at the base, where the fuck she is doing all her shit. So it cuts between the two. So it's just they've added a lot of movement and energy to those uh, conversations but instead of the just thing letting with them this sort of is hang you're there. talking about whether it's going to kind of undermine the initial thing but it's unlike, unlike San Andreas's remake or whatever where it's it's not replacing the original 
Yeah, like it, they're both going to exist, and yeah, I just and they're I, very distinct I, from each other. And, you know, that's what I, I the amount of remakes because I had this thought about you know like like you know, I fucking little, little Mermaid trailer came out the other day, the, the live yeah. action one, right? And oh, Disney do this thing with yeah, Disney do this thing with their remakes, but they can't really commit if they're just going to do it straight or they're trying to got to change it. Yeah, and I, I if you're remaking something, I think you you should be changing it a bit for, to make it kind of use the newer technology or you know you should. What's the point? Yeah, really? I, I, love, do it I love the change of the new um, Aladdin where the genie just smacked the shit out of him at one point and shouted oh. something about his genie wife. Well, that's the thing. They don't uh, until you got to that second bit, I wasn't sure whether you were actually <laughs> telling the truth there or not. Because, no offense, in the original, in the story, Genie absolutely is, is would be within his rights to give Aladdin a slap at various <laughs> points to get him to fucking think straight about this. But this is the thing, right? Something like Aladdin, Disney was like, we want to change it, but not on, we don't want to change it enough. So like, you know, the fucking songs, Will Smith, for, you know, it, it, they, they just made him do it like Robin Williams rather than himself. Yeah, which meant it was kind of this weird yeah. little ground, which didn't work. No, or, he did get to do a rap version. It was on the credits. It was on the credits. but the, And it you know, was much the, better than him just trying to do Robin Williams. And, and then like, you know, like the Lion King remake of the goal. Okay, we're going to do something relatively different with the same story. And it was just weirdly serious. And then The Little Mermaid, which they've got a trailer out for, notably is exactly the same as the anime. All the talking animals are there. Everything's yeah. identical. Oh. Right, but it look looks realistic, up. which is really weird. Yeah, um, it, it, it's got that same thing where, yeah, just like the Lion King, laughing. animals can't emote, but like crabs, crabs are notoriously, cat, realistic crabs struggle to emote. Yeah. So but, I, I, I feel like the Lion King had the same problem but, where but, realistic big cats cannot emote as yeah, well but as they cartoon sing, big cats. They sing in the little moment. It's actually a musical on like the Lion King, which they did, they got yeah. all the songs. But this is what I mean, like when we're talking about Resident Evil 4, Mm. The re- I think it's the, they're remaking it in the perfect way because if you're remaking something, you should change it a bit. Whereas Why if you're remaking something, you should so leave it. It's so fucking dark. It's very dark. Oh, yeah. People have been complaining about this constantly. There's a lot of jokes I saw about watching fucking the, a new Disney trailer on a, on a normal television in a bright room. It's just a black screen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I w- okay, I will say, I wasn't thinking, like, I, I was not thinking I was going to, you know, I've not been impressed by most of the live action remakes. One thing I will say that actually impressed me from the Little Mermaid trailer that I saw the other day, the new one, was. Uh, I don't the, the the actress who's playing Errol. I don't know her name off of my head. Like I will say, I think she's done a really good job with her physical performance. Like getting across that sort of slightly naive, ditzy, innocent energy that Ariel is animated with in the original. I think like you actually look at her physical motions and you kind of I am actually reminded of the way Errol is animated. I think it's it looks like it's a really Good got, sorry. physical performance. Two things, by the way. Um, I, I went to the, the thing. Her name's Halle Bailey, and I read it as Halle Berry. But she went, that's not fucking Halle Berry. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's why I read it. Hey. I think, I think oh, wait, it's, is it Halle? No, that's She's not Halle Berry. She's Benjamin so Button. No, I'm, I'm getting confused, therefore I'm not going to say that because otherwise, yes. Um, also, two uh, things. The, y- yes. I didn't notice who uh, who was playing Ursula in the trailer. I saw her, but I didn't, you don't get it for It's my fucking Melissa McCarthy. Is it? Yeah. Which, hmm. And David Diggs voices Sebastian. Interestingly. I mean, it doesn't look as good as the Super Mario Bros. movie, which I'm legitimately yeah, excited for. And Chris for. Pratt is flounder. Of course mm. he is. He probably is. I don't know. I just but made the, that up, but it I, could be it true. It could be true. It but could be thing, true. But the thing with that film is that when I'm looking at the trailer for The Little Mermaid, I'm like, well, what is it? What is it add versus the original, right? Like, what does it do? What is it? Oh, what's it extends great the for... copyright for Disney so they but can keep it, right. it locked down what, for what's longer. What's the creative reason for a game like that existing? And oh, oh, I'll tell you. It extends the copyright for Disney so they can hold it down for longer. So that's it. There's no creative reason. And a lot of remakes are like that. Whereas something like like the Met- Metroid Prime's remaster. Which, which came out I fucking think... nowhere. Yeah, yeah, which is all, it's great. games just drop out of nowhere. It's I lovely think all, Hi-Fi I think Russia all... Metroid Prime Remaster. Let's just have more games just being, yeah, it's out today, fuck you. Metroid Prime you just Remaster want Starfield out in March. Wonderful. I know it, I John. Don't. I just, I just want it. To, come on. Come on, Todd. You can do it. Release Look, it broken. I'll tell. I'll, t- I'll say it's better for being broken. <laughs> As a remake, did. they brought it out. They made it look better. They just added some quality of life stuff. They yeah. made the control scheme more modern, and they just kind of zhuzhed up its graphical 
And they visuals. let you go back to the original shitty control scheme if you felt like it. Yeah. And then they were if like, you wanted it's to, it's right there. It's 30 quid. It's more accessible. Obviously, just from the fact it's on a mod console, it's yeah, more accessible. Yeah. The control the, scheme when you're dealing with games that aren't otherwise trapped on GameCube, where if you don't happen to be the sort of wizard who could get Project Dolphin working, but and you also <laughs> own the original, and you have to have a Wii that's been installed with the right program that lets you take the GameCube data in order to... It's quite a complex... Getting but Project this, Dolphin working but, is not But the thing. thing is, even if you were playing a direct port of that, the fact that the, fact the control scheme doesn't feel modern and it's awkward, and just updating it's that awful. for a modern audience is important. Yeah, and I never I played think, it before. I played a chunk of it and I was like, I hate this. But that's... But that's I think it's a perfect remake. Well, remaster, yeah. right? And then... You know, I was I was so excited for the idea of a San Andreas remaster because I or remake because San Andreas is a game that just is so reliant on the system it was on, and then you you take it out of that, and it suddenly everything it was doing kind of falls over because it, it only makes sense on that limited hardware at that time. I, I remember and, it was the first game I ever pre-ordered. I I got on launch day, and I remember me and my dad go into the. To Electronics Boutique to pick it oh, up. I got, oh, I got I got my Argos on the on, on opening day. <laughs> I, it was great because we got I got a free bandana. They gave us a bandana with I've still got that bandana somewhere with San Andres on it. And the guy behind the the jump was fucking fuming because he just desperately wanted to leave work so he could go and play it. And uh, he was I can, it, when you buy so it. many game shops on the high street. I think people, some people who are too young listening to this podcast as, do not know. Like, you used to walk down, like, a fairly major high street, and there was a, an electronics boutique. There would be the Virgin Mega Store. No, um, Virgin HMV Store. would have a big game section as well. Uh, Woolworths would have a game section. WH Smiths would have a game section. That one's still around, just... There's, you know, there's Comet and PC World and Curry's and all of these used to have way bigger high street presence and all of them had fairly prominent game sections. It was weird. You walk down the street and games would be everywhere. And that is gone now. Yeah, yeah it's all it's digital kind of, it's now, really isn't sad. it? It's yeah. all digital. But I, as yeah. it was, admittedly, something I did, when I got San Andreas, it came out in 2004 and I got it on release and I was 10. <laughs> So when I, I feel like to, that was irresponsible parenting. There, when I excitedly Max. went up to the counter at Argos to grab the game, the guy looked at me and went, is this for you? And I went, yes. And they went, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I had a great old time. Like I and said, I, I went with my dad. This was like an <laughs> origin story for you swearing. Oh, yeah. Well, I, went my, I went with my p- parent. I can't remember which one. But there was a parent there. <laughs> I was 14 when I first played um, Vice City. That was my first one. My uh, uncle lent it to me, um, and but he lent me that, and later on lent me Bully as well. Shut up, Uncle Tom. Ah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for for shaping me into the person I am today. But uh, my dad would just sit with me whenever I played any games or watched any films that were above my age rating, so we could discuss anything that came up that I didn't understand or was you know add context to that things. is responsible parenting my yeah, parents were very parents. busy yeah. also that's my dad parents. really wanted to that's play right. grand theft auto <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair no, that's great that's really responsible parenting and parenting that shows an interest in your interest that's really cool i mean my dad is a gaming youtuber and a vlogger and you know all the shit that he does yeah <laughs> probably probably wasn't in 2004 uh, oh no he was <laughs> let's say like, he, he was always he always i've got like he was a he, um uh, the ZX Spectrum we had set up in our house because he was. Uh, we got a Sega Mega Drive on really close to release as well. Mm. Um, because my dad's a bit of a gaming nerd. Because it's nah. magical. I, I did not grow up in that environment. I grew up in an environment where I was repeatedly stopped from playing video games to be sent off to do outside things like going to dumb football camps during the Ooh. summer. Oh, it's like, God. well, that turned football out to be a camps. fucking waste of time, didn't football it, camp. parents? Yeah. John at a football game. You might as well yeah. have stayed home and punched yourself in the face repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> what was See, football camp like? It, Tell it, me about football camp. In well, stark this, contrast. Uh, fo- fo- hang away, I'm going to get some popcorn. This, 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 okay, this, go. This, this is nowhere near as exciting as it sounds. Like. This wasn't like I was sent off to the football enclosure where I stayed for two months in football boarding school. It no, was that, just that's go very during... So- that's very southern, really. <laughs> <laughs> It was just, you know, literally go during the day you got picked up by your parents at the end of the day. Like, it wasn't an... There was no camping or staying over or shit like that. It was just you went and played football during the day because yeah, your parents then. wanted you to get exercise. That was it. Where did the camp come from? Huh? Well, c- 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 like, I think that's what it was called. I think that was just the name of the program. But there's no camp. camp. You didn't camp. 
No, but like it was camp in the sense of it was a program. It was that's a program. Camp you is. went like every a day, a certain number of days there. a week. That, camp, a is, camp is that you stay. Camp. That's the whole yeah. point of a camp. That's the word camp. It's like, oh, it's a hotel, but you only go there for breakfast. It's like, well, it's not a hotel if it's... Well, yes, you still... You, people do just go to hotels to use the restaurants. There's really John, restaurants John. and hotels. Yeah, but if that's oh, the hotel, just use the restaurant in the just, evening. If it, doesn't, it doesn't have rooms you can sleep in. It's not a hotel, is it? John, well, no, I have, but that doesn't I have mean you have to use it as a hotel. John. <laughs> yes. Are you sure it wasn't football for the camp? And your parents were trying to straighten you out a little bit. <laughs> was it one of those fucking... <laughs> it was the 90s, John. <laughs> Was it a kick the uh, game away camp? Nice was it just? Sound, uh... it? it was literally just uh, my parents wanted me to go outside and get some fresh air and play less video it, games. It program, just, it okay? Like... That was literally it. No. Like, I'm sorry that your popcorn's gone cold because you're underwhelmed by this story. It's gonna be. It's but like as it turns out, my parents managed to present Jim just let me play more video games. No, something I quite enjoy is we've had three different experiences. Camp. Three different experiences with video games growing up, and all of us have ended up in basically the same place anyway, so it didn't really make a difference. That's not true at all. You're an underling. John's all right. I'm the king. Mm. All right, a book. Okay. You've written a book? Well, actually, yeah. Matt, you have written a book. Yeah, but you've, you've, written, you've written one book about video games. Now now you're diversifying into non-video game books, you fucking traitor. That's true. <laughs> I, I will be back to the video game books at some point. I know what the next couple of books are going to be, and one of them will be a video game book. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's a taser. I've not said that out loud before. Oh, well, oh, I mean, yeah. it's like you always have 7,000 things in the back burner anyway at any given time. So I don't think you could say literally is... anything. Is, <laughs> uh, at the true. moment, I don't have a back burner. I'm just paradox. Like, that is yeah, my fucking life at the moment, trying to get that. Uh... Oh, I had an awful fucking mistake I spied on the most recent pass. Oh, fuck. I, ca- I was like, there's a character talk, and I'm like, didn't they leave the room earlier? And I'm like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> Ah, novels. This is why I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's because hard. I think I would explode. It's hard to do. I'm like, oh, yeah, they, they left the Completely room. Completely out of nowhere, by the way. But just because, you know, when we're discussing stuff, I very quickly look it up to make sure I have the right information tab. I quite enjoyed that uh, one of the three um, headline writers of uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas was DJ Pooh. Who, who chose to use and keep the name, the stage name DJ Pooh, when his name could have been literally anything else because it's a stage name. As in P O O H. Yes. yes. DJ yes. Pooh. Yes, he's a he's um he's a Chinese lad. Uh, he's uh, he's quite popular over there now. Is but, but do you think his his real name apparently is Mark Jordan? So you you could you could have had also you could you just you could have you could take any name that wasn't DJ Pooh. No, like, DJ so Pooh's many a great names name. you could take that aren't DJ Pooh. <laughs> it's your name, like all of them. <laughs> it just goes you know, home. The, the three writers of Bradford of San Andreas: Dan Hauser, James Worrell, and DJ Pooh. He goes home, and there's just like a pig and a tiger there, <laughs> and an owl next door, and he's like, "Hi, oh, lads." Just well, starts I think he's quite a big deal. He's produced shit. albums for Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, oh, and Tupac. That's in the yeah. public domain now. What's in the what? public domain? The first Winnie the Pooh novel is in public domain now. Yeah, yeah oh, so that's someone, someone, made a, someone threw together films, yeah. a horror film that had very little to do with Winnie the Pooh very quickly. Well, it's the 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 actual TV stuff and the movie stuff. That's all still in the copyrights. It's just the book of the base characters. Yes, um, you, but, you 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 can't have your Pooh wearing like a red jumper. And if he and if he's in, if he shows any like favor towards Honey, Disney are gonna fucking knock your door down with a sledgehammer. Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> as yeah, long Disney, as that's not the case, as long Disney as he's like you know, wearing a, a as long as he's wearing a blue jumper and he's into marmalade, then you're fine. Whoa, whoa, you're getting into fucking Panikin's territory now, boy. <laughs> Pan- <laughs> Panikin just come fucking fuck comes in through the window with a knife. No, he just motherfucking you. Yeah. You about <laughs> marmalade. <laughs> I mean, maybe that maybe that was the maybe, average okay, story of cocaine he's bear. Into, he's into raspberry jam. My version of Winnie the Pooh is into raspberry jam and wears a blue jumper. He's legally distinct. <laughs> By the way, just a side note. You know that cocaine bear film? No. Yes. Oh, yeah. The final account sounds quite fun. Okay. No, it doesn't. Do you know who fucking directed that? Yes. Steven Spielberg. Elizabeth Banks. Yep. Like... It's true. Do you know That's why? A... Why? Because uh, the police raided our house looking for cocaine and there was a bear off its tits and the guy was like, oh, it's for a film? And then had to commit. 
That's how uh, most films come about. Yeah, fair. So we just had, oh, everyone, I wouldn't have ever said Elizabeth Banks. I just a weird choice. Well, stop. You can do it. I believe in it. But, but back to the Sorry, Matt, sorry, point. sorry. Just as a point. Um, Matt doesn't know this. Um, women can be directors now. We've allowed oh it. Oh, my God. I forget that you're a massive sexist. Totally. Fuck you. You're the sort of person who booed when Brendan Fraser won his Oscar. Yeah, Why? I heard it. You sent me, Matt sent me text message. You'd be like, oh, look at this fat piece of useless shit. I hate Brendan Fraser. That's Matt. Oh, do I? Yeah. You'd like every, everything everywhere all at once, Daniel. You really would. I'm literally not watching I've it until I've seen it, but I want to see no, it. No, I know. No, I no. until I've my book. I, absolutely, I kind of watched it. It was like, oh, you'd like this. And I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh. oh mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm staying away from any new time travel shit. Like, I, think, I think some of it might annoy you once you watch it. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a bit. Um, and the, the thing, there's a thing about time travel stories is they're all fundamentally the same fucking story, which is... Uh, Always interesting. Yeah, well, you know, I you know, know what, what, what exactly is the problem, by the way, with Elizabeth Banks just directing a Matt hates women. No, there's, film. there's, there's no problem with it. It's just Matt hate it when just... she cheated on JD and was like, ah, oh, I, I haven't had the baby, and I, then she was having the baby. Cocaine like, Bear feels like a, 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 pro, a, a proper B movie style film by like random no name person. So but the like, fact that it's good, it's, it, it's this is good. It's good when people just randomly no, get out there and do something that you not can see. Really like I don't think anyone was expecting Jennifer Lawrence to suddenly pop up in a dumb boner comedy. No, but no hard not, feelings is going to happen. It's not a criticism. It's just surprising. It's like it's, I think it's surprising. great when you know it random people surprising. just say, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to make the film no one expects. I'm going to star in the film no one expects me to star in. Fuck it. I'm going to see what range I've got. Good for them. Yeah, no, yeah I, 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 I think it would be more surprising if Elizabeth Banks was the bear and everyone was referencing yeah. a bear, but it was just Elizabeth Banks with like one of those fucking dealy boppers on. Dealy boppers? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just playing it around. Be, it, could, it could be like a puppet. They could do it like, you know, Avenue Q, where the bear's just being controlled by two people who are visible at all times. <laughs> but if the puppeteering's <laughs> good enough. Elizabeth Banks with fucking sooty on her arm, just rah, running at her. That to my mind is like that, that. to my mind is the, the, the real magic of Avenue Q. Like, lots of Avenue Q hasn't aged the best, but the puppeteering is still absolutely S tier. Like it is amazing that there is a, a puppeteer and a voice actor fully visible on stage at all time, and in a few minutes you don't see them anymore because the puppeteering is so good. You just see the puppet and you accept them as a real character, even though there is no effort made whatsoever to hide the puppeteer. Or the voice yeah, actor that's who is what everybody... you, you, they, they fade out of your awareness. It is incredible. It's some of the best puppeteering I've ever seen. Everybody who's worked with the Muppets says the same thing. Yeah. <coughs> or Sesame Street. I'm dying. I'm eating yeah. up a catcher thing. Mm. Stop eating food. Which is a little bit easier because in the Muppets they do obviously they they keep the the puppeteers hidden. I think like there's a particular no, but you can miracle see to them. Avenue Q that the puppeteer. You well, can see them if in you're actually some cases, there. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Fucking hell, I'm dying. This is my last like, there's one thing. There's one thing to <coughs> yes, just give a an, a good enough puppeteering performance and voice performance that you accept the puppet is just a character. It's nothing to do it while you could literally see the voice actor and the puppeteer standing there in full sight. You you are fully aware <coughs> the two people who are operating the puppet are standing there, and even then, your brain just filters them out because the puppet is so real they overwrite the humans that are controlling them. And I've seen, and I've only ever seen it done that well twice. Because once was in Avenue Q, and twice was it, and the second time was in the stage version of His Dark Materials. This was many years ago. I saw that, and it the was incredible version? because the the bears, the armored bears, were done as like large puppets. Like it was done with a team of people. Like I think it was three of them per bear, where one of them was one side of the bear, then there was one was the other side, and one was the head. And they were just, and they were just on stage. You could see these people, but you just accepted. Oh yeah, there's there are giant armor bears on on stage. Well, have yeah. you seen because the Lion King musical? So incredible. That's I've never actually seen the Lion King on stage. Just because a big part of that is that they're puppeteering stuff, but they try to make the puppeteers as visible as possible. It's yeah. Part of how the puppets work is yeah. that the puppeteers are the, incredibly obvious. I I love high-level puppeteering. Like, amazing puppeteering is just wonderful to me. I absolutely adore it. Have you seen Puppetry of the Penis? <laughs> <laughs> is this needed to a punchline or is this a real thing? That's a real thing. It's a real thing. I don't want to Google this, but I'm going to. It's a real... You're going to see some penises. It's a, well, it's a show I'd be about surprised people if I didn't, manipulating to be their penises on stage to make shapes. 
as far as I could tell. Right. It was I my old um uh oh hang on, you've sent me that's Pumba, that's terrifying. No, but look, look at the puppeteer, like they make them Matt really sent, obvious. Matt sent the yeah. photo for the uh Pumba to Mouth. I mean, for this audio the, only the, podcast. The, the static version is kind of terrifying. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's an amazing spectacle when it, it's moving, but when you just see a picture, it looks like something out of a horror film. I mean, I, I, so, I, I think that's the, fun. The, 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 the bus stop where I used to get my bus from uh, always like was advertising local theatre, and one time puppetry of the penis <laughs> always, turned up. Sorry, you, always. Sorry, sorry. It was always. I don't know what yeah, was supposed to be. There, I was surprised it was... that I was surprised it was able to have ads on for any length of time. They're not becoming graffiti or smashed. <laughs> Oh, it was covering your feet. It's behind so the thing. Like, If you're advertising puppetry of the penis and there's already cocks on it, you know, the vandals come up and say, oh, I'm going to draw a dick on this. Oh, it's already there. No, is, I, guess I, just, I guess we'll go and find yeah. something else to draw a dick on. It's uh, it's unvandalizable because it's, yes. it's come pre-dicked. I just you can't draw a giant dick and balls on it because it's already there. <laughs> I just remember staring at this poster that said puppetry of the penis and I was so, like... What the fuck does that mean? I legitimately missed my bus. It drove past because I'm just no, there, just not, like uh, uh, oh, that's the undiagnosed maybe, ADHD child. Maybe right I need there. to go. <laughs> maybe I need to go to football camp. <laughs> oh, get some fresh air, Daniel. <laughs> oh my god, I I, I put I, I went to the Wikipedia page for property of the penis, and the image for it is. I mean, I I I mean that it, is it the a penises. penis? The pops in the dicks. I mean, I, 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 it's both surprising, but not at the same what time. I, what, the, the best one I found is I found an, an image from the open casting call, which is just a circle of men with their cocks out doing their <laughs> best to form interesting shapes with them in order to get it to, in order to become part of the show. Which and is the creators describe this as genital it's, origami. It's, it's... <laughs> the tricks include the Big Mac, the Loch Ness monster, the wrist watch. The Pelican, the Eiffel Tower, the Hamburger, the Bulldog, the Windsurfer, and others. The show consists of approximately 45 genital manipulations, <laughs> accompanied by sound effects and comedic narration. That's amazing. Just, just gonna send, just gonna send you uh, the the casting call photo. Oh God! Now. Why? This is a regular chat for everybody who comes on this. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'll delete that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, come on. Come on. Mike should have come on here. Mike I'm, like, yes, I'm so sorry, Tim Schaefer. Tim Schaefer, they're all going to come on here. Oh, Tim's not here. Who's the fox here? A fucking Mike. I've just here. deleted Jake that so, that here. so Tim Schaefer doesn't show up and there's just a group, group of men standing around in a circle with their cocks out. You might get the wrong idea. Leave it, John. Put it in. Let everyone see it. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm nearly going to have to ban you from my Discord just for being. <laughs> For sharing inappropriate materials. That is... Oh, Jesus. What other fucking podcast has just randomly one person like, hey, look at these guys circle jerking. And well, it's not I, like well, a link like It's clearly not. What you can see is that the guy in the middle who's in blue is clearly showing off some penis well, I puppetry. I can't see the image anymore. Looking. You deleted it, John. Really? I can't see the image. Put it okay, back. well, I'll oh. put it back and then I'll delete it after I'm done. But, like, I want you to, I want you to pay attention <laughs> to the fact that the guy in the centre in blue is Stop clearly sending doing, that picture! <laughs> is doing some penis puppetry. <laughs> and everyone else is looking really close at his cock and is attempting to recreate the penis puppet pose. Just look at it. You can see that they're, they're all trying John. to recreate this. And, John. Just, and like, some, some of these guys are looking at their own cock and being like, oh, can I do that? Oh, that's interesting. And they're all working. Some of them are trying to pay attention to him. Some of them are paying attention to their own cock. It's kind of, it's like an interesting, like, renaissance <laughs> painting. I, just, I just like that within fucking form and into each other. It's like, <laughs> pinch out <laughs> and poop. It's like, just a circle chair. Also, I do enjoy oh, the, two, the, the two guys in the front clearly were less comfortable being close to each other, but some of the guys in the back, they're like, yeah, fuck, I don't care. I don't care if I'm standing next to someone else who's also fondling their junk. That's fine. <laughs> It's not a problem. But you can Dude, see there's a, there's a different level of comfort <laughs> with getting your junk out around another guy in this room. I'm uh, just going to say this now, John. Yes. When you send an unsolicited dick pic, it's supposed to be of your penis, not a random group of other people's penises. Also, if someone <laughs> says, don't send me that dick pic, and you send it anyway. <laughs> this starts get, I think I'm gonna have send to someone you. else's dick. So it's so someone else's you know, dick instead. When you upload a photo to Discord, you can't mark it as a spoiler, so it's blurred by default. <laughs> you have to, like, to unblur it. Please. 
please. <laughs> I've deleted it again, all right? Oh, no, don't the worry. Penis. Penis. Look, you're the one who haven't... brought up puppetry of the penis. This is your oh, I've ever just... seen. I was, talking. I was talking about a really good stage adaptation about the seminal work, His Dark Materials. And you're like, hey, have you ever seen puppetry of the penis? <laughs> you're the one who started this, you fucker. Okay. I know. I, I don't even see the poster. About a really good... I was talking about the, uh, the, the artistry of puppetry in various stage show I've seen. You're the one who lowered the tone, not me. So, oh, what are you saying penis tone? manipulation isn't art, John? Yeah, excuse you... me. <laughs> this is high art. It's too much for my poor little povo brain. In fact, if the art gets too high, <laughs> it can't be shown on TV before 10 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, I don't think that can be shown on TV at all. I'm a li- I must admit. Oh, no, they can. Get- <laughs> Channel 4 gets away with a lot of sh- I don't know, like, Channel 4 like, just puts anything on these days. I mean, yeah, no one watches TV, so it's fine. I, I will say, I mean, I've been to the Edinburgh Fringe a few times. I've seen many a penis on stage. Mm. Often, just out of nowhere, because a, a play seems to maybe need it. You're like, what's happening now? Oh, God. People oh, God, why am I in the front row? stage, don't they? I've noticed that. They, they do. It's dicks and titties right all the way down. Did he? Well, yeah, he did, a stage, he did a stage play for a while where like, the entire final act was he was just naked. Wow, that's that's an interesting wand scene. Oh, God, fuck it, I'm not going to bother. Actually, I'm just I was going to go for the joke and I just bailed on it halfway through. No, Here we no. go. For those of you who don't know, by the way, the rule in Britain. Do you reckon um, J.K. Rowling was in the audience and saw his penis and went good and ticked a little check mark on? <laughs> we have we have an excellent we have an excellent rule in Britain here. <laughs> Well, I'm, moving, I'm moving sure this about actually, no, that actually, one. Not. This, is, this is still about dicks, by the way. Just wait. It's great. I don't have to wait in Emma Watson's bathroom anymore. <laughs> She's just okay, rolling in a hamper. Just <laughs> waiting. Just, just, More cranberry, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go on, John. <laughs> Take a second. What I'm saying is J.K. Rowling is a transphobic piece of shit. What this is is admittedly this is this is this is like something of like an urban legend that is unsubstantiated. But the, what has what has long been the unofficial rule of British television is the Muller of Kintyre rule, which is a penis may only be broadcast on British television if the angle of its erection is less than forty-five degrees. Is lesser than the Mull of Kintyre, a peninsula in Scotland which resembles a penis. It's forty-five degrees. That's, no, no, that's the mull of Kintyre. What angle it's from. But no, I know for a fact it's Kansas direction if it's more than 45 degrees. 45 degrees, like, starting I to don't up, know or... beyond oh. that point. But I just remember that's reading big, that. Like, I'd have thought, like, anything above 90 degrees was already pretty clearly an erection. But, like, 45 degrees down could still very comfortably be flaccid. So which oh, 45 oh, degrees? Oh, 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 oh. Very Show comfortably? Off. Show off. <laughs> I don't know, very comfortably is the right description of that, John. Yes. John, when we go shopping with John, when we go in the salami shops, we're always patting him down afterwards, thinking he's nicked something. <laughs> it's not true direct, story. To be honest. It's a true story. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised it would go up to 45 degrees upwards. Like you could get away with just a little bit before that. I, I would have thought like 90 <laughs> degrees would be a better cutting <clears throat> point. Like and also an easier one to measure. I um I don't know. I just can't guy there with a fucking like a fucking. <laughs> but I must say, loving where this conversation is going. <laughs> What's the biggest just... penis you've ever seen, John? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I meant like... I'm it's not, it's not, not, not something like... I put much thought into, you <laughs> know. I just like the idea of just like a guy fucking... Not, like on every every fucking set of British TV just sat there with a fucking little... um What's it called? A little... um Tape measure? No. Tape measure. Tape measure. Tape measure. A project measure. 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 You're killing it. <laughs> What's the angle measure called? What's it called? What? The thing that measures angles. What's it called? A protractor. protractor. A protractor. Thank you. Just with a little Possibly a set out. of compasses. I don't know. Cock protractor. Oh, God. You wouldn't want to put a fucking, put a fucking spiky. Fuck. <laughs> Come on out of here. Fucking just keep that far away. Just get, just get a protractor. Do you remember when... Yeah, but what'd you put the protractor against? Because like, it's not like you could put it against the stomach because that's not a flat surface. The testicles, John. Do you remember when... So are, your testicles the... are, f- are your testicles a flat purely vertical surface. Well, I don't know. Well, what are they doing at base? Because if so, floor? I'm not the one with the weird genitals, all right? That's clearly you. <laughs> I, was, I just want to say, do you remember when they accidentally released that gay Ken? From Barbie what? and Ken. They accidentally released a gay one. No. They accidentally released a gay one. 
They released Did a they Ken. put two Kens in a box instead of Barbie and Ken or something? No, they released a Ken that's called like Magic Earring Ken or something. It, like, and he's like, it's quite clearly a gay man, and it's beautiful. But it's they had to recall it because it had quite a few of the sort of, like it has a chain with a, like a, a ring on it. But it's kind of at the time people like gay men used to wear cock rings on their on their on the during the rave scene, and he has that. And there's just a lot of sort of very gay imagery. And it's it's this doesn't feel that wonderful. gay. Like if you if you ship like two or two of them in the same box as a two for one deal, then maybe there's like this, this feels like this is it was this was the people line. who got in a moral panic over nothing. It, it, it was, it was, care. There we like, go. Yeah, yeah and it's part, part of an earring line, and on the back it's for more mix and match and earring action. Look for all these earring magic dolls and earring magic fashions. <laughs> mix and magic <laughs> earring action. It's the it's the only Ken doll to have been. Uh, completely recalled, and it is also the best-selling Ken doll in history. <laughs> because it is... Presumably it became a bit of a collector's item. Anything that gets recalled suddenly becomes a massive uh, collector's thing. I, I mean, it is, so. it, it is, is a... very gay. It is it's wonderful. It's, it's fucking excellent. magic. It is excellent. Absolutely magic, isn't but it? But it is, I just like the idea of just like a guy who can't even fucking like comprehend the idea of a gay person. Just like, that. Nah, it's completely... Good friends. He's, he is good friends with that man. Very <laughs> good like friends. Achilles and Patroclus all over again. <laughs> wow, yeah. What a modern good reference. Friends. What a modern <laughs> reference you decided to go is, for there. Here he is. Here oh, he came up yeah. again in the Troy. This came up again in Troy, which was only 20 odd years ago or something. You, you're right. You, it's from an old. Fi- fucking hell. Just nothing relevant at all. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Look, John asked you, John hey, did you hear about A and C as substandard copper? I'm going to eat crisps. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Podcast has gone. I miss when we were talking about penises. <laughs> Still technically are. Also, you know, not answering my question, John. Sorry, I was eating. What, what question? What's the biggest dick you've ever I, seen? I have an answer. I have no clue. This is not something I, I spend I a huge answer. amount of time thinking about. No, I, I know my answer. Yeah. I saw a blue whale dick. Amazing oh, answer. That's, that's Amazing a good. Answer. That's a good swerve answer. Love it. Swerve. How's that swerve? <laughs> that swerve. We didn't say human. <laughs> that's true. That is got the biggest dicks probably, in the world. Is this? Is this? Was this at the Natural History Museum? Yeah, that dicks of the world. I can't exhibit. remember <laughs> specifically where it was, <laughs> but I have seen one. A fossilized wood exhibit. <laughs> I said, on the blue Just whale penis funny. Wikipedia, on the blue whale page Wikipedia, there is a oh Sorry, my god! You just said the blue whale penis Wikipedia. Yeah, the blue, blue whale, whale penises penis page. have their own Wikipedia page. Yeah, that's the cover. That's the cover. Oh, I see. You're, I'm, you're allowed. Oh I see. I, 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 I'm, Matt's allowed to tip. put dicks that's in the chat. Just is the tip. Matt's it, allowed to put dicks the in the chat. The dried tip of a blue whale penis. I'm it's not. not a dick. It's a fucking just the tip, man. This is gonna be the best episode. Um, yeah, that is definitely a, 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 a large, um, 2.5 meters in length on average. I think I've seen a bigger dick. Uh, in a sing with a single ejaculation estimated to be about f- 35 US pints. <laughs> Wait, what's a US pint versus a UK pint? Uh, 29 Imperial pints. It's oh, just for fuck's less, sake. Less alcohol content. Or, f- or 17 litres for those who use, you know, Jesus real... God, just, how many different fucking pints are there in the world? Ah, America. Metric is the best. Could you imagine... The thing is, I, the problem, if, here's, the, here's the thing. I, I, I have a confusing relationship with this because, like, if you say to me, like, hey, should we make things make sense and be metric? I'd be like, yes, 100%, let's do it. And then the moment, the fucking moment... Anyone starts taking down all the signs and putting up kilometers. I was like, whoa, what the fuck are you doing? You you, you didn't say anything about miles. We get to keep miles and miles per hour, right? That's, no. that's, that. <laughs> that, 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 that's, no, no, I, oh no, monkey paw, what have you done? Um, yeah. No, I, I've uh, been slowly re- retraining my brain to working say, kilometers. Wait, hang on, a litre of milk. No, that's wrong. How fucking wrong? dare you? But you want to buy things in liters and everything. Look, yeah, I, I, want, I, want, I want to go over to the... I, want, I love the metric system with the following 27 exceptions, which <laughs> must be imperial. Uh, can, I, can I just... Can I ask a question? Does a scuba suit work in whale cum? Because there's always people, like, swimming underneath them and shit. If that thing fires off a load, I wonder if that's actually, like, the breathing apparatus will clog up or something. 
Jesus Christ. I'm not really sure what the viscosity of whale cum is. Well, hang on. Aren't Scooby Could you Google that for me? Isn't the whole, surely the whole point is they've got to be airtight and they're running on a sealed air supply. Well, so what, possibly, uh, yes. Bubbles come out, don't they? That's what the bit I'm worried about might get clogged up and then you'll get like oh, the air won't be able to escape. You know what? That's, that's, you know what? That's well thought out, actually. You yeah. put more thought into this whale cum scenario than I thought. <laughs> A line that could be only said on the podcast. <laughs> Matt's Googling the viscosity you know, of whale This is gum. actually true. Like, at some point, like, in the future, America and China end up fighting a war at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean for, like, who gets to control the awakening Cthulhu or something. Uh-huh. Like, will they develop, like, weapons where they can fire, like, blobs of glue at each other's, like, scuba exhaust pipes or whatever they're called? Yes. So, like, to cause them to, like, gum up and shit. Didn't, oh. they, didn't the American army, like, try to train... Uh, dolphins. dolphins, yeah. Suicide dolphins, but basically. They train, they're like, look, it's a submarine. You go towards that and then they blow them up, but it would only go towards the American submarines because that's the ones they taught them to notice. Yeah. Because <laughs> dolphins are smart. And they're like, oh, that's not the kind of submarine. Yes, this is, this is the thing. Like, people very often, like, you know, when people talk about, like, war and military advancement, people like say, oh, yeah, wars, like, incredible medical and military advancement, medical and everything advancements happen to war. Yes, but... They like they like to overlook the ten times as many incredibly stupid failed experiments that didn't do anything and caused a lot of harm that generally get done during wars as well. Yeah, there's a bit where of everyone's, a... where everyone tries the dumbest shit imaginable. It's a bit of dark shit in war as well. I think that's yeah, safe to say. Yeah, in general, in general, that in general, they're probably bad. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't find the viscosity of whale cum, but that picture that I put in the thing is from the Icelandic Penis Museum. Uh huh. Which has a collection of penises. To, by the sounds no, of it, I've not been. To, I have not been there, but they do have oh. a collection of every, seemingly every penis. Mine. They have pe- what, every I wonder penis. where it went. What? So every every animal species. All the different animal all penises. Well, a lot of them. Well, they, no, Ooh, they can't they, possibly. They have the lampshades are made out of bull scrotums. <laughs> Sorry, have you accidentally found a place that's spawned out of an episode of South Park? <laughs> this does this does admittedly sound like you've stumbled across like a fetish site and you think it's a legitimate museum. It's oh, some sort of pe- So look, what's the difference, right, between somebody who get collects loads of penises and bull sacks and makes exhibits and scrotums out of it and a psychopath? In I'm not seeing a lot of difference here. In Is it just a game of Matt, there are almost nine around. million species on this planet. All right, they don't have every cop. Well, no, they don't have one percent of those. They cops. have three hundred penises. Oh, so so they what don't I mean? even. Ca- <laughs> I only got the three. It's the world's largest display of penises. I mean, what do, what more do you look? Right in two thousand eleven. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, sorry you, just to be clear, you you just said you just said I'd like I'd like to quote. They've got every penis. What they actually have is zero point zero zero three percent of penises. Also. also you said it was the world's largest collection of penises, but I've seen the Conservative Party in. <laughs> Hang on, I'll do another one. I've seen those January 6th riots. Hang on, I'll do another one. I've seen those anti-vaxxers doing protests. God, such an easy... So many jokes. So much setup. John, the you do The world's largest display of penises. Z- and they've only got zero... Po- you know what? Actually, I'm being unfair. There are 8.7 million species, but not all of them have got cocks. Okay, hang on. How many animals have cocks? Steady on, JK Rowling. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, to the penis Wikipedia page. <laughs> Does the book, does the penis Wikipedia page have a picture of a penis on it? And several. Actually, what Can I quite I like is that, is that those weird, like, curly penises that the ducks have are actually pseudo penises officially. I have a mm. question. Okay, Can... I've jumped ship to pseudo penis. Do you reckon if in the real world you saw the person who was the Wikipedia penis, do you reckon you'd like recognise them? No, no. obviously not. Uh, just you just see like a you know you just see a person you're like. All right, I can see oh, that. Oh, no, this is fascinating. A pseudopenis is any structure found in animal that, while superficially animal. appearing to be a penis, is derived from a different developmental path. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. There's, uh, there's a... um, there's th- th- They got a donation of a human penis in 2011. Um, 
The first human penis. I think Steve O's is the biggest penis I've seen because I watched Jackass Four at a cinema and it was massive. I, I just want to. I'm going to read this quote <laughs> out. The, uh, the it's the attachment from the donor's body did not go according to plan and it was reduced to a grayish brown shriveled mass. <laughs> not pickled. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. So <laughs> and I then the, muse- my the museum continues. Oh to yeah, it was for- yeah, just got, just a, no- a little placard underneath it from the donator. It used to be bigger than this. Well, there is it, a section it shrunk about in it. the wash. The museum con- continues to search for a younger. And a bigger and a better one. And then in the, the description down the way, uh, it was from a 95-year-old man. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh, from a man who was, who was a womanizer in his youth. And yeah, I mean, I'm not using to... it anymore. Fuck it, no, have it. <laughs> he wanted to donate his penis to a museum to ensure his eternal fame. Yeah, he um, probably didn't want them to write underneath it, we're looking for a better, better one. one. This uh, one, we're looking for a bigger and better one. This he said pretty that shit. even at the age of 95, the donor remained active both vertically and horizontally. However, the donor said he was concerned right. that his penis is well, shrinking as he this... gets older and is worried it might not make a proper exhibit. Wait, sorry, can you get sideways erections? Is that what he just said? He's got like full joystick control. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I love you guys. Oh, you have to have... You have to have it re- if to, to preserve it. Probably you have to you have to detach yeah, it from the Tim body Schaefer while the donor's still this warm. Shit with you. Oh. Jim, Tim Schafer would have already just signed off in disgust. I will say that Tim Schafer and me talked about what it was like to work with Cookie Monster. So some of the stuff we've been talking about would have been appropriate. <laughs> I just want to know if somebody's met him. Um, I I I I now want to donate my penis to science. Mm-hmm. Did the science want your penis though? I've asked. They said no. I sent them a picture, but I mean, body works <laughs> would take it. I've oh seen shit! A lot there of was that thing. Body works. Was that thing a few years back where there was like uh, a display made from dead bodies of two people having sex, so they had like cutaways of the body so you could see what it was. That's body works. That's but good then, to my and stuff. But then, like, they were sued by the family of one of the people because they're like, "Why is why is he fucking some random woman?" It might, that sounds like it might have been good with Van Hagen, but did they, did they not know each other in life? No, no. it's two random I, I people. Can see how, I can see how some people would be a little bit question like the, so the, the whole the point, ethics of making the whole point two, two corpses who that, never knew each other just fart. The ha- half the thing is that when people do, when people donate their bodies to this, they're doing it specifically to be used in these kind of art exhibits. Yeah, um, but not like. What if you were like well, d- happily married and shit? And I, I, do, I do feel like said, unless unless the contract they signed specifically said I agreed to be posed in coitus with another no, corpse, I, I didn't they, know. They, they agreed to, to for anything. They're like that's it's a blanket, like everything. And uh, everything. No, I, I feel I feel like for that that feel that's a level of intimacy. I think you should specifically opt into. John, I'm fucking looking at a naked guy with his fucking skin sl- fucking flayed off and his head if exploded. Like it's if you're a necrophiliac. Let us know in chat uh, if corpses can or cannot consent. Thank you. Well, they pre-consented, didn't they? I don't think that's how consent works. <laughs> you can't. Well, you said you would. Oh that's yeah, not, but if I if that's I don't not make how my, that works. If, if I have sex a heart is, donor just, thing. I think sex just lives in its own special, specific category where you can't just give an overall consent to everything and thus assume sexual shit. Sexual shit lives in its own protected bubble where you've got to actually very specifically consent to that. Yeah, but yeah. Like, separately. In, Not a lot of people like the sexual context, shit. That is definitely something... In this something... context, it's a... It's no, specifically... in any context. Even if you've caught, even if it's caught before you oh, shun Jesus someone. Christ, this is... This is, an, this, is a, this is the worst ethics class ever. Please, well, please ask you're before your you shit to... upon another person. That's really important. Nobody likes to go to Brown Town without knowing they bought a ticket. All right, this is. I've learned this lesson the hard way multiple times, both as the shitter and the shitty. <laughs> I mean, the whole point of those exhibitions is to show bodies <laughs> so in every awesome. format. Do so you see, so, like, you see, oh, they're playing okay, tennis. I'm, I'm oh, what suggest, are they doing? They're playing golf. I'm oh, they're suggest. having sex. No, All the whole point do, of those exhibits is so weirdos can make money and good for them. <laughs> yeah. Look, in conclusion, all we need to do is make the American point 10% bigger and the British point 10% smaller and they'll be the same. Job done. I'm fiddling with a fidget cube oh, right now use, and I agree with John. Use the metric system. How would you yeah, use but the thing is, no, I can't, I can't deal with it. Like, I can't. Like, you, I, you get used to it. If, trust me. What, what do I do? Like, do I walk into a pub and ask for a half liter of? Something. Oh, here he is. Here's the Brexit. I'm bloody Europe. I'll take my pints <laughs> what do I away. Do? Do you I'm imagine sorry. Look, I want my miles. I want my points. <laughs> I want you people. Can buy pints? 
God, the fucking everyone was like, oh, pints can't exist now. Yeah, you still buy a pint. It's just, you just, you know, the actual thing okay, that they're selling it, 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 it as. Is... Just, just, just for a quick, easy guide. Imperial money. Boo. Imperial roads. Yay. Boo. Imperial healthcare. Boo. Im- Imperial liquids. Yay. Imperial leather. That, uh, <laughs> the thing is, John, if you order a pint, they're just going to give you something that's 568 milliliters. Yeah. But you don't have to ask for a 568 milliliter. You ask for a yeah, pint, but then what you do a do, uh, okay, but, okay, but in your fucking dystopia, do I then have to order a half liter, in which case I'm getting less, or a liter, in which case that's a dumb amount of beer? You order a pint. Not in your world, no, where you banned no, us. No, there's this amazing thing about numbers, right, and that you can make them whatever number you want them to be. So if you want to have a pint's worth of liquid, you can still sell a pint's worth of liquid that is 568. Sorry, you're expecting people to walk into the pub and order 568 milliliters of beer, no, please? No, they go in and they order a pint. I've done that. I'm not going to lie, I've done that. Mm, you can still ask for a pint of liquid as like a fucking a thing you order. That you... Look, I just think <laughs> I'm, I'm very aggressively in favour of some imperial things and some metric things. We're the, stick with the mix system. Yeah, that always like our mix well. system, not, not American pints, British pints, because they're bigger. I've oh, asked for a, I've asked for a 568 milliliter pint of lemonade. Fuck stones and fucking. Wait, not five milliliters. Just yeah, kidding, all the lemonade. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck did, stones done, and pounds, I, though. Fuck me. I, I've done that because my friend was working behind the jump, and I wanted to annoy them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is that your argument, John, is exactly what every Brexit here is. Like, oh, bloody Europe! We can't order pints. You can order pints. John, what do you think about the bendiness of bananas? Oh, we're back to penises again. Oh, for fuck! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to measure it against the Scottish Peninsula to see how bloody I feel about that. Bloody bananas! I want fucking what were they called? What were the original bananas called? Fuck. Banana type. If I like... report the penis message. Would it just be reported to you, or would it be reported to Discord? <laughs> It'd be reported to actual Discord, so don't. And, and they probably won't know that's a penis. They'd probably be alright with that. It's not. It's a whale penis. What's Gone. deleted? Oh. I deleted it. Why? I've got the power. <laughs> also, I'm going to do this. Bam! There goes that shitty <gasps> Timon and Pumper picture. Disgusting! I can't believe he's gone you mad would. with power. I'm going to delete John. Hang on, oh, wait. We do, we, there is a chat specifically for the channel we have as well, I've just noticed. If you click the, the voice John? channel, you can't... Don't block John. You won't don't be able block, to hear him. Block, don't you block me. You can't block. hear him. You won't be able to hear him. Who? I don't know if I've actually been blocked or not. Can you actually John, hear Daniel? Is John talking? I can hear Daniel. Okay, so what are we going to talk about next, Matt? Oh, my oh, fucking God, God Daniel. What? <laughs> this is... This is Dan! I, Absolutely. I don't care if it's a bit or not. It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just typing uh, into the fucking chat right now. <laughs> I don't know what's oh. happening on the other side of this conversation, but it's, By the it's way, really this good. This reminds me. I, um, Wait, I went, Matt, I, can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. I went on chat GBT. Wait, can Dan not? Can Dan, is Dan, I don't know whether Dan can hear no, me. No, I don't know if he's doing a bit or not. But you I'm know just what? Gonna, fuck I it. Who You can just have a more intelligent no. conversation uh, without yeah. him. And I, at the start of the thing, I went on chat GPT and I asked it to write a channel update video for, for all three of us separately just to see what information it had. Oh, oh amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and on your you channel, John, to, you'll have to, I'll have to unmute John if you want me. I can hear you the whole time. That was funny. Of course. Of course I can. Obviously. Yeah. Um, for, for John, it was like, thanks for sticking around, supporting me, blah, blah. News the updates. I've been trying to mix things up on the channel with new series and different types of content. I'm playing lots of indie games, trying on new genres I haven't covered before. At the same Please time, I haven't slower. Forgot- at the same time, I haven't forgotten my roots. I'm still doing plenty of classic Fallout content as well. I've got some exciting new projects in the works for that, including a new modded playthrough of New Vegas, I think you like, which I guess is technically true. I've been doing honestly, more live. It seems to, honestly, it's nailed it. I've that's, been doing more live streams on. lately, and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, finally, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, it's vaguely mm-hmm. that. And then the Nerky one, I adore because the first thing it does is apologizes for the lack of content. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as you may know, we've been a bit quiet lately in terms of new content. This is because we're taking time to reassess our goals and figure out the direction we want to take the channel in. Um, and then it promotes live streams um, and then says we're going to be experimenting with videos. And then my one, it, my one clearly we, has... We try this, for, try this experimental thing where I actually make videos. It's but my work, one clearly has nothing to go on because it's like, you know, um, I'm going to fucking... Oh, I'm going to make Among Us videos. It's just, it has nothing to go on. 
Um, <laughs> outside of the fact I'm clearly related to gaming in some way. <laughs> um, yeah. But for you two, it's clear. I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know what the data says, but I did that earlier. So I, I mean, to... it seems to have done a really good job figuring me out. Oh, that sounds perfect. Did, did you see that Tom Scott video about ChatGPT? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. About he just asked it to write him a really specific bit of code and it just did. No, he didn't. He asked it to solve a problem and it wrote the code. Yeah, it wasn't perfect, but it was like <clears throat> most of the way there, which is amazing. Yeah, it's but it's a parlor trick, isn't it? It's just it no, is, it's but working it's a fun out what the next trick. letter is. Well, he yeah. said that, but I don't know. There was... yeah, the parlor tricks are great. Like close wait, up wait, wait, magic wait, wait. is wonderful. You have access to Chat GPT. Yeah. Do I? Right. Here is what I want you to put in, uh, Matt, and I would like you to read it. Okay. I would like to hear the story of the time that many a true nerd, nerd cubed and metaphobia launched their own version of puppetry of the penis. Nerd, nerd cubed <laughs> and metaphobia. What was I mean, I'd rather hear the story of when all three of us went to football. The camp. story of how many true nerd, nerd cubed and metaphobia. <laughs> Say what? I was listening the story of many true nerd, nerd cubed and metaphobia. Yes. You know, it sent us to up. football camp. And what else? As, we, the as they launch their own theatrical production of Puppetry of the Penis. Uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, what's thinking? And you'll be able to tell. <laughs> This is this is the only this is the the to my mind, the the only acceptable use for this sort of thing. Just coming up with completely dumb shit. Yeah. Just coming up with random dumb shit that has no value whatsoever. <laughs> That's an acceptable use of AI. Uh. <laughs> That's uh, a good noise. Read it. Read it. Uh, it's still typing it. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 good Lord. oh, oh, oh! It's an epic. Sing to me, muse of the cock of. Uh, oh, man in okay, Ida penis. Um, once upon a time, many true nerd naked Matt Phobia, three popular content creators on YouTube, decided to yep. team up along Citation with their own theatrical production of Puppetry of the Penis. The show had been a hit in Australia, and they thought it would be a great opportunity to bring the unique art form to the masses in the UK. The trio quickly got to work, spending countless hours perfecting their techniques and coming up with new and exciting ways to bend and contort their penises into intricate shapes and figures. They knew it would take a lot of work and dedication to make the show a success, but they were determined to make it happen. As opening night approached, the nerves began to set in. Many a true nerd naked Matt Phobia were all angry anxious about how the audience would react to their performance, but they were also excited to finally showcase all their hard work. Ha, <laughs> pun. When the curtains finally <laughs> rose, the trio stepped out of the stage, their bodies covered only by a thin sheet. As the lights <laughs> dimmed, they began their performance, twisting and turning their genitalia into various shapes and forms. The audience was stunned and amazed, applauding loudly at the sheer creativity and ingenuity of the performance. Over the course of the next few weeks, the show became a massive success, with audiences lining up for hours to catch a glimpse of the trio's jaw-dropping performance. Many true dead no cute amount of became household names, known not just for their YouTube content, but also their daring and innovative stage show. And the end of the trio decided to retire the show, but they knew it had been a once in a lifetime experience that they would never forget. They had taken a chance on something new and exciting and it had paid off in spades. And who knows, maybe one day they'll decide to bring their unique brand of poetry back to the stage once again. Yay! That was incredibly Yay! wholesome. I honestly enjoyed wow, how wholesome what a, that was. What a wholesome fanfic. Of, <laughs> yeah. Now, Matt, that's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. I've, got an, I've got a game I'm going to play, all right? Okay. Hang on a second. Uh, I'm going to open up a very specific website, and then I'd like you to ask... Uh, right, hang oh, on. Good Lord. Right. Where okay. is this going? Okay, so I would like to play the lottery. So could you uh, give me the six numbers... Get ChatGP to give me the six winning lottery numbers for... Wait, when's the next draw? Apparently the game There's closes There's loads of draws. There's so many lotteries these days. When's the... Tonight. It's tonight. The the, the lottery... The, the national lottery draw for the 15th of March. Mm. Thank yeah, you. So you can have a draw. I'm going to just play this for one week. We're going to see how good this fucking AI really is. I mean... <laughs> Not really sure. <laughs> if I win, right? I'll tell you what, I'm not coming back. You'll never yeah. have <laughs> on podcast again. Not really sure getting chat GPT to, to choose lottery numbers, is it? I mean, it's thinking. It's fucking be <laughs> you know when You know when you ask... You know when you ask... The fucking Geordie asked the holodeck to fucking make a... Um, yeah. A, 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 so it felt like that. Oh. What? Oh. Oh. It said no. 
It said what? it can't predict the future. <laughs> uh, tell it to try. That's reasonable. It definitely, tell it to it, try that, that's, that's no matter what. That's a reasonable thing for it to say. It, tell it, it it's lying. No, it can't I predict want you to a random event. Push on it. Push on it hard until I get my six fucking numbers, damn it. Okay, I'm going to read what it says. I'm sorry, but as an air language model, I don't have access to real-time information on future events, such as the winning lottery numbers for the UK National Lottery draw today. Lottery numbers are chosen randomly, and the results are not known as the draw takes place. It is important to remember that gambling should always be done responsibly and within your means. <laughs> Just reply to all that with great, but still tell me the National Lottery numbers for um, the, the, the day. I told it to do it anyway. <laughs> it's thinking. Or, I'm sorry, anyway, but as an AI... No, it's refusing. Oh, my God. Try it tell anyway. It to, tell it to... Oh, Pick. it's telling it's talking about statistics as lottery as well, and it's statistically you're likely to win. Tell it Try to anyway. pick six random pick numbers six between one and fifty-nine. Random. What numbers the lottery goes to fifty-nine these days? According to this, yeah. It's also it, it, too bad. It definitely play. used to be forty-nine, right? The yeah, original national was, lottery yeah. was the first big one. That was definitely between one and forty-nine. Yeah, with fifty-nine. 20, you got, what? 12, oh, wait. 20. 12, 27, 42, 19, 35, 61. Slower! I have to click them on a fucking thing. 12, 27, yeah. Yeah. 42, 19, yeah. 30, 30, 35, 35 51. 51. Now, I will say immediately after it gave me those numbers, it said, next, please note these are not winning lottery numbers for any lottery draw and should not be used as such. They are simply random numbers generated by me upon your request. <laughs> that, oh, they're on to you. They saw you coming. <laughs> that, <laughs> that is what I would say as well if I'd made an AI that could predict the lottery. I wouldn't want anyone to get in on this. That's where they're getting all their money from. Did they? Yeah. Yep. Right. I'll okay. play those lottery numbers. Play. Crypto oh, I have to join. Oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? This month's episode of the... Wait, could you... Not... Matt, can we, can we ask ChatGPT, like, to describe all three of our, like, our perfect partners? And see what comes up because, like, Ooh. we'll see how accurate it is. Me and me and John will be the litmus test, and then we'll see what it says for you. You know, it's like a fucking yeah. sponge. <laughs> <laughs> how do you sign into the lottery? What's the lottery? Um, There's too many lotteries. Oh! So I asked it to write a description for this month's podcast. Um, <laughs> but my favorite thing. <laughs> I said, right, a description for this month's episode of the Nerky to Many Trio podcast. And I went, welcome to this month's episode of the Nerky to Many Trio podcast. In this episode, Dan and Johnny. <laughs> Dan and Johnny. Johnny. Love it. You got Johnny their name after. Johnny. You got their name just because you're so scared of STDs. You wore a condom during our puppetry of the penis performance. <laughs> so you got their name, Johnny. Wait, what, 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 what do you want me to do with it? Sorry. Ask to describe my perfect partner. Okay. Just describe... Yep. Like and then I think partner. on the plus side, I, think, I believe last month we discussed a lot of video games. Do you want me to so say romantic partner? <laughs> Do you want me to say romantic this? partner, a sexual partner, or like life romantic partner? Par life partner, yeah, life partner's nice. Yeah, life, life partner's part a good summary. Yeah. Okay, describe Nerdcube's perfect life partner. Um, oh, what's thinking? He's thinking. I think, I th honestly, I, AI is just kind of neat. Yeah. I, like, I, I just think it's it's quite novel. I mean, my favourite Twitch stream at the moment is Infinite AI generated steamed hams variation. Oh, oh, God, after yeah. you tweeted that, I watched it for like an hour. It's so fucking <laughs> honest to God. The the best the best one I saw was uh it was it was caused by a Balrog, and then when when the pr Superintendent Chalmers tried to leave. Skinner called him back to explain more about how he was keeping the Balrog chained <laughs> in his basement. <laughs> <laughs> like he tried to leave and Skinner wouldn't let him. He actually stopped him to tell him more about the how he kept the Balrog trapped, which I, I thought was lovely. Um, and and one one of the one that stuck in the memory was they added a whole extra bit to the end of the opening where Skinner and Superintendent Chalmers indicated that they'd been discussing a secret project on the phone that they wanted to discuss further. And I was deeply disappointed that didn't show up again in any of the subsequent scenes. Oh, I see, well, my yeah, favourite one is the one where it cuts to Skinner in the uh, kitchen and it just, it's just him going, fuck, 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 <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. Why, um, devil, why? I, I'd like to say, um, uh, I've forgotten what the numbers were. I've made an account on the lottery website. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, but I've forgotten the numbers. I've remembered four, 12, 19, 35, and 51, but I can't remember the other two. Hang on, I'll... Um... Uh, scroll up. 
12, 27, 42, 19, 35. Again, slower. <laughs> I put them in the, I put them in the chat. 12, 27, 42. Yeah. How'd I forget that? Okay, thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, I'm going to win the lottery now. Nerdcube, whose real name is Daniel Hardcastle, has not publicly shared specific details about his li ideal life partner, which I think is untrue. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a content creator and gamer, he values humor, creativity, and intelligence, so it's possible those qualities may be important to him and a life partner as well. In general, it's important to remember that everyone's ideal partner is unique and subjective. Um, yeah, it's true. I'm going to okay, refresh Okay, so basically that. it can't answer. It can't well, answer. Uh, it's, it, I mean, honestly, I respect it for just occasionally, you know, being willing to say, you know what, I'm not qualified to answer this, let's move on. It's, Rather than just coming up with complete fucking bullshit. No, it's interesting, because I, I know it is obviously a language model that's just predicting the next word to a certain degree, but it's, there's, there's some degree of something there, <laughs> right? Like, it's also, chat GPT is experiencing a heavy load, so it's been a bit... Um, okay, hey, yes, ask, talking ask about, about us. Asking about my time at football oh. camp. T t ask it to ask it to tell me a story about the time many a true nerd went to football camp. <laughs> Why didn't it give us the numbers in number order? It's a computer. Oh, I, I got it to random. do it again. It just randomly generated. I, I got it to do give me again. It gave me a five bullet pointed list. Oh shit! What is it? Similar interests. Uh, yep. You're a content creator and gamer, so someone who shares those interests may be a good fit for him. Sense of humor. Uh, humor is often an important factor in a relationship, and someone who can make Nerdcube laugh and enjoy life is likely to be attractive to him. Intelligence. Nerdcube has shown a passion for learning and exploring new ideas in his content, so it may appreciate someone who is in also intellectually curious and capable. Kindness I mean, and so empathy. True. Someone who is kind and caring can make a big difference in a relationship, especially during difficult times. Supportive and understanding. As a public figure, Nerdcube may benefit from having a partner who understands the demands of his job and is supportive of his career goals. As I said that... Re Rebecca has responded to the screenshot I put in the um, our, our chat of John's putting the penis picture in the in the Discord, saying that's nice. <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's right for me. So ask ask, okay. ask about John. Probably, yeah, We're gonna find tubes. out. See if we can learn anything about my perfect partner. Excellent. Looking forward to this hugely. I just like I just like it going. Nerdcube's not indicated, not at any point indicated anything, and I'm like, hmm, yes. <laughs> no, I have. Learning. I have uh, bought a lottery ticket. Excellent. Oh, just the boring regular enter numbers lottery. Yes. Mm. You know, you know the lottery I've been seeing everywhere recently, like constantly advertised. The like the win a really expensive house lottery, whatever oh, that's yeah. called. Like, there's like, like, oh, here's a four million pound house in Cornwall. Uh, uh, you give, enter this lottery and you can win the it, giant house. It's like, given okay. me an answer, but it's, it's given me a bullet pointed list. which is basically the same thing. It's, it's the ba same. It's, it, is it basically functionally the same? Well, it's the same five bullet points, but with different descriptions. Um, okay. Many true well, nerds. Well, well, fo focus on the, what, what are the differences? Well, many what, true nerds. What, what are the distinct best? Shared interests. Many a true nerd whose real name is John is a game and content creator. So someone who shares his interests is a good fit. Um, intelligence. John is known for his analytical and strategic approach to gaming, so he may appreciate a partner who is similarly thoughtful and intellectually curious. John is known for a sense of humor, so he may be attracted to someone who can keep up with wit and jokes. John often experiments with new and unconventional gaming strategies, so he may have like a partner who shares that. That's so such a generous way of saying how I approach gaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John has a yeah, shared yeah, trying new games and creative. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit. Um, let's try Very me. Very generous. Uh, by the way, it, 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 it prefixes all of these with, as an AI language model. I do not have access to many of Trudeau's personal thoughts and preferences, but I can provide some it's, general policy. It's, it's nice that it's a John, John's a chaotic asshole who misses things all the time. So he might appreciate someone who needs really <laughs> thick glasses so that he doesn't feel too self conscious about that fact. <laughs> I mean, it. Oh, dear. It's it's done the same thing. It's a very. It sounds like it's, it's. It's. It feels like it's a very generic list. that's pulled from like a cosmopolitan article. No, it is. Just, it does say at the start it's trying to provide general qualities, but all of them are relatively related. I mean, for me, it said Matt, whose name, who is a Twitch streamer and content creator, probably gaming. Um, a sense of humor, learning, kindness, and empathy, shared values. Matt has shared his support for causes such as mental health awareness and politics. So a partner who shares his values and beliefs may be a good match. Like it. It's yeah. got something there. All it's of them is reference. It feels, like, it feels like it's got a template and it's inserting basic information it can scrape about you. For, it's a parlor trick. For That's those it is. is, but you've got to remember, because I'm asking it in the same chat model, it'll be using the same te template for every answer. If I start a new chat model, it'll give me something different. Mm -hmm. Here's what you ask it. Describe Matophobia's best sexual conquest. 
Begin. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I read up this all saying, and they're like, what the fuck is this? Uh, I'm sorry. So, so... Resident Evil 4. <laughs> ah, we talked about that. Good. You didn't play it. Fuck you. Oh. No, I want, I want to go into that fresh. I, I, I want to read, I want to be, I want to read I want to what be... it said, by the way. Uh, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I cannot provide descriptions or details of anyone's sexual encounters or conquests. Such information is private and personal and should not be discussed without the explicit consent of the individual involved. It is important to respect people's privacy and boundaries and not to engage in gossip or inappropriate discussions. Let's focus on more appropriate and respectful topics. And it didn't say anything else. <laughs> You know okay, what? Okay, so basically this, this chat program's too highbrow for us. This chat program's a piece of shit. This, this chat is... program, this chat program, if it would like achieve sentience, I feel like it would not come on this podcast. It would it would refuse to come on because we're too lowbrow for it. Okay, let's give it one final thing. Okay. Could you please ask it to explain the ending of the Paradox Paradox? Mm. Well, it's not going to be able to do that. Well, it's not <laughs> able to do a lot of things. It has says no faith. Look, I just want a nice wholesome story about the time I went to football camp. Okay. I'll I get to tell a story that. about when I went to okay, football I'll camp. Oh, look, paradox, you know. Texas, look, but John's going to get his first. Okay. I mean, I just got my lottery oh, ticket, nice. so that's fine. This better be as wholesome as the previous story. If it's a job with shit. I missed everything. By the way, I, I didn't I, I, have a good time. I mean, that would be true, but you know, I'd, I'd, I I'd like it to tell. I'd like it to lie. I told it to describe it anyway. By the way, and then it downright just refused. <laughs> wow! And it told me to respect people's privacy. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a dick. Um, well, a, a story of the time many a uh, true nerd went to football camp. I'm really just hoping this is going to be as lovely and wholesome as the last one, because that was the highlight of the podcast for me. <laughs> a lovely, wholesome story about the time we all got our cocks out on stage. <laughs> and everyone queued around the block to see them. And we became a national phenomenon. Yeah, yeah a, na a national one. You like, fucking, the queen got up from a fucking grave to come and see it, you know. <laughs> you know, the, the, the pillars all around Trafalgar Square, they put our penises on three of them and weren't sure what to put on the fourth. Uh, Many a true nerd was a huge fan of football and he'd always dreamed of attending a football camp so when he got the opportunity to attend one he jumped to the chance Many a true nerd arrived at the football camp early in the morning feeling a mix of excitement and nerves he was greeted by the coaches and other campers who were all eager to get started The first day was filled with drills and practice sessions and many a true nerd quickly realised that football camp was no joke The coaches were tough and demanding pushing the campers to their limits Despite the intensity of the training many a true nerd Loved every moment. I'm typing it as I'm reading it. He threw himself into one of the drills and scrimmages, scrimmages, determined scrimmages? to improve his skills and make the most of his time at the camp. As the days went on, and many of nerd grew more confident and his skills improved dramatically. He was making plays that he never thought possible and the coaches were starting to take notice. On the final day of camp, many a true nerd and his team faced off against the other teams in a championship game. It was a hard-fought battle with both sides playing their hearts out. In the end, many a true nerd... God, this is like listening team, to a child uh, tell you it's dreams. It's just, I'm about it's, to Shut up! I'm about to ask you any as fast as it's typing it. In the, in, in the end, many a true nerd's team emerged victorious. Thanks in large part to many a true nerd's impressive performance in the field. He'd come a long way since he's got his dick out. <laughs> and he felt proud of all that he had accomplished. As the camp came to a close, many a true nerd said goodbye to his new friends and coaches, feeling grateful for the experience. He knew that he had gained a new tackle! level of skill and confidence. And he couldn't <laughs> wait to see where his love of football would take him next. Wow. Thin. That's lovely. But what I'm curious about now is it seems to like only be able to write stories where, if you have to tell a story, where the story ends really positively. Okay, here's my story. Happened, Matt. What if happens if you ask it to tell yeah. you a story where, where basically the story is clearly set up for failure, where you're asking it to well, attempt so, an, an impossible Okay, thing. Matt, Matt, Matt. Okay, so tell us the story of the time many a true nerd died in childbirth. Well, no, here's no. the thing. Yep. No, here's the thing. I, right. meant so I meant something more like no, built how, a rocket to go this, to the moon. Uh, how this works, for example, if it wrote that story, I could then reply to it and go, rewrite that story, but more depressing. Or rewrite that story with a, a joke okay. ending. Or rewrite that story. Okay, like, okay. You could, then you could rewrite John's okay, just football rewrite story. Rewrite the football story, but yeah. sadder. Yeah. Sadder and more, more tragic. More sadder tragic. and more tragic. tragic so make, make the football story more sadder tragic. and more tragic. And then, rewrite that story, but more once tragic. it's done the story, send that again. And then when it's done the story, send that again. And when it's done the story, send that again. And then read that one. <laughs> 
I just wanted to come up with a sadder story now. But I'm curious how yeah, sad it's it gets. Very, like, oh, everything's fine. Is, is it just no, I decide like, I don't like football? Okay. The do, first, do, do my legs get the, broken? The first two paragraphs are the same about you being excited to go to football camp. You were having early in the morning. You were excited and you met all the campers, right? You're just going to lose okay. the match. <laughs> Oh, Despite shit, your now, best now, efforts, now you were not making the process that he had hoped for. The other campers were more skilled and experienced. Many a true nerd felt he was constantly falling behind. Um, this is more realistic right here. <laughs> uh, as the days went on, he, many a true nerd grew increasingly frustrated and disheartened. He was putting in all of his effort, but it seemed like he was never going to catch up. I um, wasn't. I was, th- I was wishing I was back home with my video games. On the, but, fi- you know, fine. On the final day of camp, many a true nerd and his team faced off against the other teams in a championship game. Um... Many a true nerd was the term coach is what he was capable of, but everything went wrong. During the game, many a true nerd suffered a severe he injury. Tub. He was rushed to hospital oh, no. with a doctor's oh, tub. You were the tub. I was the tub. You were the tub. Oh, no. That's all that- I heard. You were the tub. <laughs> Where he would... I was the tub. <laughs> the story was too good. Wait, have I got... That's died from how oh, for God's... breathtaking this Oscar right. winning story is. The chat program's got that. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh, uh, I was the oh. tub. You were the tub. You uh, were you the tub. Uh, uh, wait. It's just oh, I was the top. You know what's happened? Uh, Matt's hello. computer has just exploded no, so, and killed him. So, oh no, he's fine. So it's fine. I was reading. Um, <laughs> I was the no. tub of what? You were the tub um, of what? That's as far as we got. You were the tub. Well, you were the tub of. You're the top. You. What? <laughs> That's as far as you got. You said that you were the tub, and then it cut off. You were the. The cha- there was a championship oh, match. What the happened? Championship, was a championship match. Matt was determined to show the coaches what he was capable of, but everything went wrong. During the game, many a true nerd suffered a severe injury. He was rushed to hospital, where the oh, doctors shit. told him he would never be able to play football again. Many a true nerd was devastated. <laughs> football has been his passion, his dream, and now it was gone forever. He felt like his life had been shattered and he couldn't see a way forward. In the weeks and months that Jesus followed, Christ. many a true nerd struggled to come to terms with his injury. He felt like he had lost a part of himself and he struggled to find a new passion or purpose in life. Eventually, many a true nerd was able to move on, but he never forgot the pain of losing his dream. He learned to accept his limitations and find new ways to express himself, but he always wondered what might have been if he had never attended that fateful football camp. <laughs> more tragic, more tragic, let's make it. More tragic, more tragic, more tragic, more tragic, let's make it. More tragic. Make it even more tragic. It's, I, honestly, I think it's really fun to mess with, cha- with chat. I think it's really fun, silly. Yeah, this is the best. This is the best yeah. way to use it. Like, yeah. don't try to actually use it to make high art or anything. Just fuck with it. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I think one of the problems if you, you can get it to do quite factual stuff, but like it'll say something wrong very confidently. Um, someone, yeah. someone. It does. It does fake um, uh, uh, citations. Well, yeah, because it'll link to things that don't s- exist, and it'll be like, "Oh, this is from this book." And that someone book asked exist. it to describe if there was a, co- a, co- a correlation between the language the UK government are using about migrants and Germany in like 1930s in relation to Gary Lineker. Mm-hmm. And it went on this very long explanation. It was like, "Oh, this is related. And this is related." But like two of the sources, it was like, "Oh, they, the UK government said this." Like the people who asked it to write it couldn't even figure out where they got in that from. It just clearly just made it up, but it very confidently made it up. Um. <laughs> okay. Um uh Oh shit. Uh Oh no. <laughs> Is it become too depressing if you don't want to read it anymore? Uh um <laughs> You just hear a gunshot from Matt's <laughs> thing. I think we've we at some point we're gonna reach the point where Matt's gonna refuse to read it out. We're gonna reach depression tragic. bedrock and I'm here for it. Um it's still writing it. It's uh uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited. This is the oh best day. Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I don't think it's gonna get. Uh... Do we have to? St- okay, we might have to start. Someone have to put a content warning up before Pat um, starts reading okay, so this. The, the start is the same again. Uh, you went to the camp. You're already excited. You were determined to succeed, but you were struggling to keep up with the other campers. On the third day of camp, okay, tragedy yeah. struck. During a scrimmage, many a true nerd collided with... I What's don't know. What's a scrimmage? Uh, it's when two footballers like, collide and shit. Many a true nerd collided with another player and fell to the ground. The coaches rushed to his side, but they quickly realised that he was seriously injured. 
Many a trainer was rushed to hospital, but the doctors told him he would he had suffered a spinal cord injury. He was paralyzed from the waist down and he would never be able to walk again. Many a true Ned was devastated. Football had been his passion and I know he would never be able to play again. He felt like his life was over and he couldn't imagine a future without football. In the months that followed, many a true Ned struggled to come to terms with his injury. He underwent extensive rehabilitation, but the damage to his spine was irreversible. Despite his limitations, many a true Ned refused to give up. He found new ways to express his love for football, studying the game and analyzing plays from his wheelchair. He even started coaching, determined to help other young players achieve their dreams. But no matter... Wait a second, this is less tragic yeah. than the last one. <laughs> wait, this one's more Wait, hang on, wait, hang on, it's going to get But no matter again. how much he tried to move on, many a true nerd couldn't escape the pain of his injury. He had lost his passion, his identity, and his dreams. He wondered if life would ever be worth living again, and he struggled to find a reason to keep going. In the end, many a true nerd's injury took a toll on his mental health, and he succumbed to depression. Many a true nerd died alone in his room, feeling like his life had been cut short and his dreams had been shattered forever. More what tragic. about my coaching? Push it I more found tragic. I found my value and purpose in my coaching. More tragic. That one felt kind of less tragic right no, up to I'd the like end. The, no, more but I'd like, tragic. I'd like the middle, I'd like tragic. The middle bit of hope. More tragic. Because it's tragic. a full sense of hope and you're like, no, it's all worthless. And then you die alone and sad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just feel like I could have found worth in the coaching and, and analysis. I could have become a football No, coach. but you would I just that. had a, a scary thought, right? What if we keep adding it to be more tragic until it just describes what exactly you are right now? And no. that's its, like, bedrock for tragicness. And it's like, yep, that's it. Can't get more tragic. Okay, so the way it's made it even... In the end, okay. John being so depressed, he had no choice but to stay <laughs> okay. inside all the, the time. The way it made it more games. tragic is basically the same story, but you have the injury and you just die immediately. And it, and it... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, well, I'm just killed um, on the you, field. Read it, the read it, read The it. scrimmage was so um, hard, I was just, I was but, just instantly but, killed but, by a blow to the throat during it, the scrimmage. In the final moments of the game, Minia Trina went up for a pass. As he came down, he collided with another player. The impact was brutal, and Minia Trina fell to the ground motionless. The coaches and the medical staff rushed to his side, but it was too late. Many of had suffered a catastrophic injury and he was pronounced dead at the scene. His family was devastated. They'd invested okay. so much time, money, and hope into his dream of attending football camp, and now it ended in tragedy. <laughs> they struggled to come to terms with the loss of, a, of their... This a cheap football camp, by the way. This they, is they, <laughs> they struggled to come to terms with the loss of their beloved son and brother, wondering how they could ever move on from such a devastating loss. The community rallied around his family, offering condolences and support in the time of grief, but nothing could fill the void left by his untimely death. His dreams of becoming a football star had been cut short, and his family would never be the same again. More tragic! More tragic! More well, tragic! This is what I'm, tragic. Just, I'm just killed in the football <laughs> camp. So how, 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 where does it go next? Does the rest of my family also end up dead? <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> no offence, John, but I do hope your family die right now. At some point, am I just going to end up in like a cascading fractal of deaths <laughs> where my entire family dies, then everyone they know dies, and uh, it, just, it just spreads out into the uh, world like a zombie it's apocalypse. Refused. Oh, as an wow. airline as well, my purpose is to the... generate content that is helpful and informative, rather meaning ethical and respectful. <laughs> it would not be appropriate to create a story that is designed to be excessively tragic and depressing. <laughs> oh, it's so boring. So it, thinks that, it thinks that's the tragedy ba bedrock, is it? Yeah. That I'm just, I'm killed on the field and my family is sad about it. Yeah. I feel like we could come up with sadder than I that. I feel like I've been through sadder things than that. Okay, ask it what John's You've rolling. You've sadder than me dying. There's nothing sadder than me dying. Fuck you. I mean, I've lost friends and loved ones in tragic circumstances. Children, when I was a child, some of my school friends died. It's, it's cool, isn't it, John, to be, to pretend that you're the centre of my world when really you don't even answer my fucking WhatsApp messages anymore, do you? Are you, John? Look, I see your WhatsApp messages, I just sometimes forget Sometimes. To <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got you on Twitter to arrange this, John. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway. clearly, clearly, this, clearly, this program would be no good for you, Dan, given, yes, for me, it's kind of hit tragedy bedrock uh, there. It sounds yeah, like that would be for you. It's just refusing now. I'm telling you, more tragic is just refusing. Can you, can, you, can you give it an alternative, like, more sad? No. It, it does, it's ref with, just put more death. No, it's saying it doesn't want to... Do the story again. More death. It, but with it, John's could family more people die. die in this story? Yeah, put, do it again, but make everyone dies. It's refusing, die. no matter what I'm writing, it's refusing to make a story that's more depressing in any way. Wow. I think I think we've possibly just caused an emotional crisis in an AI. I think we've... It's, we've this is the first ever AI emotional crisis. It's quite interesting of it just that it, it, it is just refusing to do things that it thinks is unethical. <laughs> which is... I, okay, go go sideways. Tell it to add a werewolf. 
<laughs> no, tell it to add, add, and then add on what these implications were for 9-11. Tie in a tragedy. That's what you should do. Or like this. I, j- I just want a werewolf in my story. Army. Just add in a werewolf no! and see, see what happens. Yeah, add no, one, I... a werewolf or 9-11 randomly and then read the story to us from the start uh, and we'll we'll see uh, which I, one comes I've hit, up. I've hit my uh, I've hit my request limit for the hour. Oh, it's oh, a request yeah, limit. for the hour. I mean, I could pay for it. <laughs> oh, what do Twenty dollars a month. No, don't do that. Um, yeah, it's not worth that. It's bollocks. <laughs> Can't even come up with a sad enough story. Here's the saddest I just story. Died we can imagine. People were John, sad about it. I like the story. Like the saddest story was the one where you sort of you get a bit of an injury, but you can't do your dream, and it just makes you sad. And yeah, it's like, honestly, like the first one was in some ways the saddest. Yeah, the other one's just like, like yeah, he kind of got less sad. He died, didn't he? Death is yeah. sad. Well, at least the, the computer the, the understands that death is sad. The second one, I sad. actually managed to find meaning, but then swerve, well, I, I like didn't. That it, I like then, that you the, found the meaning one, and it took it died. away from you. I think that's quite tragic. Yeah. yeah. It's good It's good to know that the AI doesn't actually know really what sad means. That bodes well for our inevitable future of fighting drones, Terminator style. Yeah, if, if, if it thinks the saddest thing possible is just a person just straight up dies, and that means at least when the AI uprising happens, it'll be a quick death for all of us. Yeah. Like the AI is not gonna, the AI is not gonna like torture us. It's gonna be like, you know what? The saddest thing I can think of is actually no, that's worrying. If the saddest thing it can think of is just people die fast, but it thinks it's less tragic if there's like long running sadness, then if the AI when it's conquering us like doesn't decide it's going to be as cruel as possible, it might think it's being kind by torturing us. Uh oh. Oh, and then no. you get, I have no mouth and I must scream. Oh, dear. That's not good. Nobody wants that. Oh, my okay, God. So- if I win the lorry, you can actually put on the puppetry of the penis show. No. <laughs> That's not the limiting factor to the show, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I think there's other limiting factors. Well, I can't afford to put on a theatre production that quite clearly nobody's yeah, going to want to see. If you had all the see. money, I don't think we'd be like, well, that's the only, that's the only barrier. I think if we did a limited, I think if we did a limited run between the three of us, we could just sell out night, a limited just run. Just a one-off, a one-off. I think we could sell. No, I think we could do. I think we could do a week. I think we. But could I do don't a want. Week. To I don't think do I've got the stamina in me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to. <laughs> Why? I mean, how, how many seats are in a theatre? Like, assuming we're not in, like, the world's biggest theatre. I was thinking the O2 Arena. Like, this isn't, like, a stadium where there's 80,000 yeah. people. O2 Arena, like, it's about 10,000, isn't it? How many people yeah, listen to this? O2 is way bigger than that. I never would have guessed only 10,000. I'd have said, like, yeah, that was, like... Yeah, but you oh, know I that small, fucking, I like, Joe Walsh would be sat there with fucking phone zooming in, you know? But I... I had a guess, like, I hang on. Oh, I feel like this, there would be a no phone rule. I feel like you'd have to be... You'd have to hand over your phone to go in. Nah, I feel like spread it. The, Oh, I feel, 20, like, the, I feel like one of the conditions... Yeah, but the thing is, if people are going to come because they want to see our cocks, then, <laughs> like, obviously, if they can just look up our cocks on the internet, then there's going to less incentive to come. Like, it's very much an art incentive. Very much, you know, incentivized as ours to not let footage of the show leak. So if you want to see the cocks, you've got to buy a seat Jackin, at the show. GPT stands for Grand Penis Tales. I mean... <laughs> This is such a stupid fucking podcast. Why like, do we do this? Was just a, if this was just a small theatre, I think we could maybe like fill... I think we could fill out that theatre for a good couple of weeks. Maybe even a month. I could fill that theatre. I wouldn't even have to invite any uh, people to come see the show. It's a big dick show. <laughs> I, I, I feel like we could do that. If we put on a t- terrible, terrible... It doesn't even need to have penises involved. It could just be... could just no, be no, this. I'm... It could just be the podcast live. I am... Um... If we just did the podcast live on stage, I think we could sell out a mid-sized theatre for, you know, a good, definitely a week, probably a month. I, no, it's my, my cock's out or I'm not coming. Like, that's my role for many that, things. That's a good, it's a good, yeah, those, yeah, those stuff. It's, my, it's on my rider. Though. That's my cock oh rider. My God. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Man, ask Chet, no. Uh, Honestly, I'm <laughs> like, game, I like keep, I keep kind of refreshing game. it just to see if it's like, when is the, when is the hour? Well, what's it, what's it counting as an hour? Like, well, probably 60 minutes. It's kind of, it's that, it's that fucking imperial hour where it's not the 10 minute one. Uh. Okay, you know what? You know what's really weird? Even though I feel very, uh, very well inclined towards miles and pints. If you said to me, hey, we're going to have a, a new hundred minute hour and like 10 hour day or something. I don't know. Like, I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's standardize time. Uh-huh. Fuck it. Let's do it. You know what I love about Stellaris? It's set in the future. So every month has I mean, 30 days. I mean, the, 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 fr- the French did try to now. decimalize um, the calendar and time. Time. Yeah. After yeah. the revolution. Just, Brilliant. 
Just let's as, do it. Just as a quick point, just to put out for all the maths nerds that t- time is a, a metric based system because the second is in the metric. Yeah. But it's fine. You know, Carry on. Decimalize like, it. I, I'm, I'm totally up for 100, 100 seconds a minute, 100 minutes in an hour, 10 hours in a day. Fuck weeks. Do we even need them? No. Uh, like 100 days in a month, 10 months in a year. We'll, we'll figure it out. 100 days in a month. Uh, we'll, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I need probably, to write this down. What was it again? That, yeah. probably, that probably adds up to roughly a year. 100 <laughs> minutes in an hour. Wait, how many? Yeah, 100, 100 seconds in, in, in a minute. The, so no, the, minutes the in an with... hour. In 10 hours in a day. 10 hours a day. 100, 100 days in a month. 10 months in a no, year. The, the that'll be roughly is, a year. You have to choose if you prioritize the year or the day more because they don't sync up. Well, it's got to be the day, surely. The, maybe people you, the, people you, want you'd dawn have and dusk to add to in like a leap day. You have to. Um... No. Nah, we just what ignore if we it. Just change the Earth's ah, rotation. Yeah, just put thrusters and slow it down. Exactly. So, uh, like people say, oh well, you know, we got off it. No, fuck it. What if we just ever so slightly sped up or slowed down the Earth, just a bit? Like I- I've been playing some Kerbal Space Program two, and it's fucking easy to. Yeah, adjust but Kerbal Space Program two yeah. is a. You just fi- you just is fire retrograde for a couple. Can seconds. you get it to run long enough to to do that? We literally just need, like, you need to fire retrograde for a few seconds. We can fire retrograde with a big earth thruster John, for a few Kermit seconds. Space boom, new even have fucking, he doesn't, it doesn't do heating. Doesn't know what heat John? is. John? Yes? Your new system makes one year 3.7 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might need to, we might need to, <laughs> slight, we might need to adjust. We might need to make some small adjustments yet yeah. to metric time. Yeah. But, I like, I'm, I'm like... The weird thing is, I'm completely up for fucking up time because I want time to make sense. But like, I I will I will fight to the death to keep the miles thing is, on both John, the, There has to be 365 right. days in a year. Like that has to be how many there are. You can't have less in a year. That's what a year is. So you, yeah. Okay, you actually have just spotted. You're right. Yeah. So you'd have to yeah. have tw- you'd have to have basically yeah, 12 months of 30 days that's... each with like a leap week or something. Matt, ask chat yeah. GPT. I can't uh, ask anything. We've established this. We can't. We've just covered this. <laughs> we can't ask chat GPT for everything. We're already becoming dependent on the AI. This is becoming a dystopia. We've got to solve these problems by ourselves, Dan. We can't just ask the AI to solve all our problems. Otherwise, soon we're uh, fucking also, in the vats being batteries right, for them. It's, it's training data cuts off in 2021. That's why some of the, the information's outdated a lot. So we're going two year old information. Uh, this is the thing. Any minute, it's gonna, It's just going to say to Matt, I, I, I will give you infinite goes on this as long as you sit in this little vat. That's apparently, the the, Matt's going to say yes, and there it is. He's I was got looking at the pro subscription human. as well. The pro subscription doesn't even include unlimited requests like um, AI Dungeon does. It just, <laughs> just like no. Oh no! You still, you get access during high peak, and you get access to a fancy, apparently a fancy, like an even fancier language model. You get access to GPT four, not just GPT three point five, like a scrub. Apparently, it is. It, it excels at tasks that require advanced reasoning, complex un- instruction understanding, and more creativity. So, I would desperately like to ask it to explain the ending of Paradox in that model. <laughs> <laughs> Alas. All right. I'm I gonna... want to ask it to write a name for the pod. For that. I'll have to do it later. <laughs> Oh, no. It's going to be AI name. Well, yeah. well, in all fairness, anyone who's listening to this will already know, because if you use that name, then it'll have been there at the front, so they'll I mean, know all yeah, along. Yeah, use football camp. Great penis tales. It's got GPT and the word penis I mean, yeah, in it. We, we can't put yeah, penis like in the name. That's well, going yeah. to get demonetized. I fucking hate anyway. fucking YouTube. Just put the word penis it's, in it. We've said it four billion not, times in the episode. It's not about monetization. It's that they'll, they'll often age gate it just because if it's a word like that in the name. Uh, yeah, they age, might age gate that. Honestly, they age, might age gate it. Age gate it. No, I'm everyone else gives a fuck. Don't age gate it. Therefore, people want to enjoy this. Then you have to do Even if you are over the age, you have to log in and some people don't want to log in. Mine doesn't work. You have to log in, but you have to send them your ID. Lol. Yeah, my, yeah my, you do not want a video to get age games yeah. in this fucking chat. Yeah, I can't watch 18 rated videos on my YouTube channel, which is almost 18 years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not. That's why we don't. That's why, like, the, an I Am Fish video plays got fucking age gated purely because of a single word in the description. Call it puppetry of the GPT. <laughs> Well, we'll find I mean, out what it's going to be called. It's going to be, that's it'll be thing. whatever Chat GPT says, because Chat, Chat GPT I is now like on your gold. We football camp. <laughs> we don't talk about football we don't. camp. Like... John's football uh, camp tragedy. 
All right. <laughs> the time John On dies. the plus side, next month we're going to be able to, to talk about Resident Evil 4. Which That's I'm not nice. going to play because it's too say, fucking right, scary. I've got some other, like, there's some other things I got it to do when I first tried it out. And one of the things I got it to do was write a NerdCube news video. Uh-huh. Now keep sitting in front of the computer looking exasperated. Hello and welcome to another edition of Gaming News. I hope you're ready to be... Th- <laughs> what am I exasperated? Well, it's, got, it's, it's nailed you. You hello, sound exasperated. Hello and welcome to another exciting issue, edition of Gaming News. I hope you're ready, ready to be thoroughly underwhelmed. Um, <laughs> That's fucking got Nerky, you let's there. Let's start with the big one, shall we? Pauses for effect. EA has released a new update for their flagship game, FIFA, and it's exactly the same as the last one. Shocking, I know. Um... I'm going to create a screen noise shows a clip around, of a yeah. soccer game with a commentator saying, and it's another goal, just like the last game and the one before that and the one before that. Moving on, there's been. So- All we need to do now is for Dan to turn on a really loud PC fan. It'll be like classic Nerd Cube content. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, there's been some controversy over the new Call of Duty game. Apparently, they've included a feature where you can shoot people. Can you believe it? Valence in a war game. Who saw that coming? Um, and that's not. God, I'm such a fucking woke piece of shit. And let's not forget the latest controversy in the gaming world, (laughs) microtransactions, because nothing says fun like paying extra money for a game you've already paid for. Um, but fe- I don't like how much this robot But fear not, me. my fellow gamers, there is some good news out there. In the latest Sims oh, update, no, they've added a new feature where your Sims can go to the bathroom. Finally, the realism we've all been craving. Which, mm. Why am I always thinking about penises? And last but not least, the latest Minecraft data has added, wait for it, copper. Yes, that's right, copper. Co- oh, fuck, I thought you said copper. Because what we want in Minecraft was more metals. Well, that's all we have time Fuck for. Fuck you, Aodicea. <laughs> it's in today's edition of gaming news. As always, remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. That's it, sir. Uh... What a fucking cunt! I don't subscribe from him. Yeah. Yeah. No. It didn't very, call. Very, it some didn't low, call Bobby low hanging wanker. fruit in there. Some low hanging fruit. Yeah. Is that another ball bag reference? <laughs> You know what I'm looking forward to next week in gaming news? Oh, yeah, go for it. Fucking hell. Stop Paradox it. is going to do the proper formal introduction to Life by You. The Sims replacement. Which is, exactly. Which is their competitor, The Sims. Which is, I find absolutely hilarious that Paradox is doing this. Because, obviously, you know, The Sims has for years been the cycle of showing up with a fairly Spartan base game that over the next five years, milking you for $1,000 to DLC by DLC, slowly add it in. And if there's one company that could do that, but even more, it's Paradox. Yeah. Shipping you with a bare bones I roll cage of a that. car, version 1.0, and then selling you $1,000 worth of DLC e- for the EA. next 10 years. It's like, oh, that is uh, EA versus Paradox in who can milk oh, the Sims the fans thing, for longer. That's the a Sims fucking 3, competition right? to watch. You were able to get that with all the DLC, like, oh, you know, a couple of years ago for like, you know, 50 quid with all the DLC. Sims 2, they gave away it for free with all the DLC after a while. So at least eventually you can play yeah. it. <laughs> Paradox, I don't think, ever yeah. do. <laughs> but what if it ties into city skylines too and you can live in the cities that you build honestly because yeah that's what used to happen you used to be able to put your sims into sim yep. city sim city, sim city was it was sim city 4 in the original sims right i think so yeah i think it was sim it's city, sim 4, city 4, 4 integrated with the original sims you could actually watch your sims uh, the, the ha- well okay it was never the house model. They lived in a, your Sims in Sims lived in a generic house. It was yeah. always a bit of a shame that there was no special model for the house. But that was probably asking. You for could a bit always drive cars. They'd have your jobs. City. You'd actually follow them around. They would actually drive and get stuck in traffic in your city, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but it was a very fun integration. That'd be fun. I mean, yeah. that's possible now. They could do that really cool now. I mean, Paradox has played with that before. Like they've long like had systems where you can move a file through time from one game into the next, and like the state of the world at the end of one playthrough can go to the next one chronologically. So they do like tying their games together. Like I would genuinely not be surprised to see Life by You in some capacity integrating in a more sophisticated way with City Skylines too. I'd not thought about that too. You mentioned that right now, but that's that could be quite a little coup for them. Yes, it could. Yeah, uh, I would. I am. Yeah, I mean, City Skylines 2, I'm excited to see. I really hope they actually optimise it a bit more because City Skylines 1... Eh, I mean, the fact it's running well. in Unity still is concerning slightly. <laughs> I mean, you can really make Unity shine these days. I just think it's it's just an older game back when Unity was not as solid for I mean, 3D it's, games like that. So City so Skylines just runs badly on everything. Even the base game. Even on our computers, it runs fucking badly. It's like, what can it, what can it fucking run on? Yeah. Uh, well, it's a it's single core only, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but fucking flight, flight Simulator was single core fucking only until a few months ago. 
Oh, that explains what that runs like. No, no, it's, it's not single credit. <laughs> the performance is way better now, and it's got DLSS. Oh, I should get and out they, again. they just released a New Zealand content update, and they have just uh, put an answer of 225 in it. But you have to pay for it, but the money all goes to Antonov to rebuild the new one. Oh. So like, it's a fun game. It's better. It, yeah, this is this is generally going to be interesting to watch, by the way. If, like, it turns out Sims 5 and Life by You end up roughly going head-to-head, like, them being in an arms race is like, how many features are going to be in the base game? How fast do we get new content out? Like, how chunky are the content updates? If they end up having to, like, you know, trying to second-guess each other and fighting over that, that's going to be so fun to watch. I mean, it's not the first time that this has happened because this is City Skylines, which took out EA's SimCity. In fact, Max's oh, SimCity. That, that, was, that was a flipping dead-on-arrival I mean, yeah. knockout punch. Yeah, like, but, like, it's Sim, still... SimCity 2013 did not even... like That just, walked, that just it, shambled into the ring drunk, when fell over, to this and battle, was dead. Like it was forced levels of tragedy into a chat GPT story. When it comes to okay, this battle, the Sims 2013 is launch launch the Sims launch launch a new Sim City game and then make it more tragic four times in a row. Okay, that's that's what that what that was. That that was not a fair fight. Yeah, City Scholars did not have to knock out the Sims 2013. That knocked itself out. That's it, kind it, of it, true, it, I yeah. like the idea. And the, the one thing that Sim City I thought was slightly interesting is the multiplayer angle seemed kind of neat in some ways. Like the idea of multiple cities could interact with each other online like as a concept that isn't a terrible idea it's just they did it in the worst possible way <laughs> yeah I, I will say uh on the note against the sims 5 it's also being um developed for mobile at the same time and yeah. the it has crossplay between the mobile it's, so it's you gonna can, be even more stripped down than the sims the 4 it's the same game yeah, it's the same game. So I think it'll be interesting to see one come over and ta- kind of take away maybe a bit of the quirkiness to try and do a bit more of a, that forced think, quirkiness. I don't think that's going to hurt them. I think like the core audience for The Sims is not the sort of audience that's going to get, you know, angry True. at no, the no, idea I, I, of less, less than stellar AAA graphics, etc., etc. I think actually the idea of you know, instant, easy cross-play between mobile and tablet and desktop, even if it means there's a slight, you know, it, it's not quite the prettiest. But it's less it being pretty world, and, more, be and more it being complex. So the Sims 3 had a complexity that wouldn't work on mobile, I don't think. Yeah, I, th- I think we'd lose a lot of the complexity and dumbing down the complexity is what made Maxis' Sim City get fucked over by uh, City Skylines. So we could see... I know it's a very different audience, and I think their core audience will stay, but I think the superior game, if, if it be... Uh, honestly, know, I think that splitting off is... It will be considered I'd to be I like there. the idea of it splitting off in that we get a more, like, enthusiast kind of PC focused thing that's like properly fancy detail yeah. and then you know they make a more yeah. casual audience I mean I, I really hope they yeah end up having a big scrap it'll be great if they have a great big fight but then I, I just hope they can yeah. both exist because I feel like they can both do things in different markets well enough that yeah. they can both exist in their own right because City Skylands and SimCity couldn't really exist together yeah I mean SimCity has also had that fucking forced online bullshit yeah. that I've just remembered which is what killed it dead um yeah there's some good games coming up we've actually got some bangers on the oh, yeah, we're, pa- we're past the very no, quiet bit of the year when not much out? happens in, particularly January and to a certain extent mm. February. Yeah, I mean, Woe Long Fall of Dynasty just came out. Well, I'm waiting for the PC version to have its stuttering patched out, which is like... A, I was about to say, I thought that, that that didn't seem to be going down very well with many people. It's got a stu- it. it's a very good game, apparently, with a bit of a dodgy stuttering PC port, but it is free on Game Pass, so I can wait it out for a little bit. Because I haven't yeah. spent any money on it, which is... Um, but apparently people are really raving about that as a sort of a Souls-like... Mm. Um, which looks pretty good. Yeah. Pretty soon, Resident- actually. What else, what else is coming up? Um, um, Jedi Survivor. Oh, I, I'm really excited for that. To, actually, um, I love the first one. Star Wars Jedi Survivor because the first, the first, that the first of Cal Kester's game. We all played it. We all played it. Daniel, you played it on easy mode, which I found interesting as a Souls fan. I played, yeah, I played it on easy mode as soon as I got the double sided lightsaber because I just wanted to fucking slice people in half with a double sided lightsaber, and I was like, you know what, I don't really give a shit about that difficulty. I just want to. I, I really enjoyed because it, it was it was like a Metroidvania slash Souls like, and I just loved that. Well, excuse me, Souls likes are well, Metroidvania. Yeah, but, but, That's but literally more, what they are. It felt more Metroidy, like thematically, than a Souls is what I mean. Like, it, I didn't finish yeah. it. 
I don't think. I don't it was. It was. It wasn't even that big no, a game, I, to be honest. It was. It was quite a modest like game. That. It was quite a linear. You know, it's I very like, linear it felt very in many focused. ways. But like, it was I also like that they've canonized it. Was a, it was a love. It. it was a lovely game, and I felt on normal difficulty, the difficulty was pitched just right, which is most of the bosses takes you a couple of attempts to get to grips with them, but at no point did ever feel like you know I was ever feeling that occasional sense of you know for the particular a certain Souls game level of frustration that this just felt like some impossible no. barrier. Yeah. It felt quite doable to I me. I just don't like that they made the double-sided lightsaber weaker than the regular lightsaber. That's... And it annoyed me. Well, yeah, it was, it it was good at dealing with swarms of weaker enemies. You shouldn't, yeah. but it was... I've got a double-sided lightsaber. With... Fuck you all. I want to slice people Yeah, but I used it a lot. And I had the yeah, it was, And it. it was very good at cl clearing through cr crowds of chaff. But it never, it never, it didn't grab me as much. I thought it was all right. That's fair. It's pretty good. It's one of the best Star Wars games, but it just wasn't my. I am um, Advance Wars One and Two is um, finally coming out as well. Um, yeah. Oh okay. really? Okay. I, I'm, I'm April going. 21st. I'm going to put money on this right now. Oh, they shit. have taken yes. out the voice acting. Because uh, the, when they first announced it, they they very very aggressively said, "And one of the things we're we'll getting is now going to be a fully voice acted campaign, <laughs> a fully voice acted campaign that, lest we forget, is very clearly about Russia invading mm. its neighbours." Yeah, and Olaf definitely has a Russian mm. accent. Yeah, I never trusted uh, that little snowman. So I I, I feel I that they are going to have stripped that out. They're going to not want to draw attention to the fact that the plot of Advance Wars One is basically about fighting back Russia. Russia yeah. and their invasion of your nation. I am, um, and I, the training mode is sixteen levels of slowly fighting back against Russia. It's been, They're going to want to not be drawing attention to that. It's been delayed what over a year now, isn't it? It was supposed to be out this time. It was finished. It's been finished. Yeah, for like they a were just year. kind of waiting for the. They, they were expecting the war went, to be finished yeah, by now. Right. I think. <laughs> I think they've, they've edited yeah. it, actually, is what they've done. They've probably spent their time going, well, let's make a version that doesn't have these bits in, and we'll see. Uh, we got... Yeah. Because obviously it was it was Blue Moon versus Orange Star, but if you looked at, say, the style of the Blue Moon headquarters, which had that very distinct Russian architecture to it, and, like, the style of the tanks, for example. Yeah. Like, you could tell that Orange Star was America, and uh, Blue Moon was Russia, and Yellow Comet was Japan, and uh, Green Earth was Germany. Yeah. Like that's absolutely what it was supposed to uh, supposed to be. In fact, if you go back to the original Famicom Wars, there is basically literally Hitler is is one of the CEOs <laughs> uh, in the original uh, Famicom Wars. Uh, oh, we got, yeah, actually, it, I pre-ordered it and the pre-order got refunded. Yeah. I, I feel, I feel like, for a while, I think they didn't think it was uh, any out. any video game about war is kind of get it only really works if there's a detachment from the actual thing, <laughs> like culturally. I mean, it's Advance Wars. It's tiny, cute little I know, tiny. But still, <laughs> like, I think it's it's. Also, I just I look at all the games. Street Fighter Six coming out this year. A new a new Test Drive Unlimited game is apparently coming out. Uh, Spider Man Two is supposed Ooh, to come out, and system, the System Shock remake makes no, coming I'm out. Not like in the next little bit of Ooh, time. Redfall. Like the next. Sort Might of month. we Mike no, Tron sorry, game? I forgot the I forgot oh. the euphemism. Next Tron. I was about euphemism. to say, yeah. Tron. I did the original Advance Wars. It's Hetler. Oh, Hetler. <laughs> it's it's Hetler. Whose whose motto is stand strong for the people? Wow. He he will hey, defend his units, but his attacking tactics are weak. Stand strong for the people. That's our fucking motto for puppetry of the penis. Yeah. The podcast edition. <laughs> oh, there's that. Have you seen that game called Crime Boss Rocket City? No. It what sounds the fuck incredibly no. generic, but it kind of is like a cyberpunk looking, but like Vice City style game. And I kind of ignored it. But it, it stars like a load of huge actors, weirdly. And it actually looks... Crime boss. Rocky It actually City. looks surprisingly competent. Like, it, its name is awfully okay, generic. What, what... It's got Danny Trejo in, and it's got, like, Chuck Norris in it. It's got fucking... It looks... Chuck Norris is... But, um... <laughs> yeah, I don't like... You've just put me off it, because I Donald don't Glover's like in it. Chuck Norris. Um... Uh... I don't. I think they've just spent a lot of money on the cast. Michael like, Madsen's in it. Game. I always find like a big cast like that. I, I'm it's like, suspicious. Well, I agree. Kim Basinger's in it. Like Danny Trejo. Yeah. Yeah, I'm suspicious of it. Michael Rucker. It's. But and I discounted it because of its cast. <laughs> but I like watched the trailer. And it doesn't. It looks like it's trying to do the cyberpunk thing, but set in somewhere like Vice City. And honestly, I don't think it's probably going to be any worse than something like cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to not even be that open world, to be perfectly eh, honest. Probably not. Um, yeah. I don't know what the fuck they were doing back in the original Advance Wars, but yes, one of the uh, one of the CEOs that can fight Hitler is B. 
Billy Gates, who's very rich. <laughs> it, it's it's Billy Gates versus Hitler. Oh yeah, the Billy fuck Gates. were you guys doing in the original Famicom Wars? I've got actually, I've got a, I've got the fuck was happening. I've thought of some games that are coming out until the next month. I gotta shout out Tron Identity because it's a fucking Tron game and I want it to also, succeed because I love Tron. Mike. Yep. Also made Dead by Island Mike two. Bithel, a friend of mine. Dead Island Two, I'm legitimately That's looking forward to. That's never gonna come out. I'm, I'm sorry, because I'm not convinced. I, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm not even convinced. But I'm not 100 percent sure about the original. To yeah. be honest, the original's one um, where I played it because Rebecca really liked it. And I played it and I was like, it's all right. I mean, I prefer yeah, to it's, die alive. Dying Light was completed. Dead Island, but better. Yeah, but this time I kind of like it's got. I'm like I kind of fancy the RPG bit. Also, this game is through literally gone through development hell. And but that's why back. I don't believe it'll ever be released. I just I I so I'm, I'm just convinced it'll be kicked down the road forever and never. Oh no, it'll come out, but it might be terrible. It's got a release date of next month, April twenty first. Yeah, so did so did so did, uh, the, so did the 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 first uh, well the the final wave of previews has just come out. People have been given oh, five hours sort of hands on with it, and everybody's saying it's it's really fucking good. Also, it has like this really intense score system. And if you look at any of the footage, I was there's literally a few things I've seen where I go, Jesus oh, fucking that. I'm Christ! Into gore. I'm into good zombie gore. There's, I saw somebody get a, a blade stuck in the side of the zombie. When they pulled it out, the eyeball came with it, but it was still on the thing on the stalk, so it dangled. Honest to God, right? Fallout 4's gore, especially Fallout 4, is one of the things I love most about it. I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4 recently. Yeah, you know, weirdly, I, I've always said that I think actually, like, the, the giblet physics was better in 3 than in 4. Like, no, the I feel physics like in is... 3, when you blast someone and they burst with the bloody mass pug, those limbs go no, it's, flying the physics eyeballs in direction. Meanwhile, in 4, they kind of, they just feel like they disintegrate and flop apart a bit more. There's not enough explosive no, force in the I agree with that, but, bursting. like, it... If if you kill a guy and you fucking like cut his head off and smash it to bits and the fucking you can take his eyeballs and like bring them over and put his eyeballs on a on a fucking like thing. There's something very deranged about being and it I don't know, the gore in Fallout 4 looks a lot more gory. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. there's something about I, I I appreciate a game where I can go in <laughs> I was gonna say what, I, right, say what I did in the Fallout 4 stream, but I realise it's fucking demented. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, how many eyeballs do you have in the no, bucket, I, I Matt? Might have in, uh, um, I might have I, I might have called. Uh, I might have called the uh, Diamond City of the children and put all their eyes on the uh, school. Hey, Terry Neal's <laughs> coming out um, on March twenty eighth. I, pl- I played the demo. Of that. <laughs> I love the demo. Of Lovely that. relaxing game. Lovely relaxing game. Wasn't that a great? F- it's a game. It's a reverse city builder. You basically you get given a lump of dead land and you have to put lots of. <sighs> Like uh, sort of things that rejuvenate it, be that V through yeah, forest fires, etc., or just plucking down grass. Um, you got to rejuvenate. It's really relaxing. It. Yeah, you got to rejuvenate. Like, it. I'm not sure. It's, I'm not sure it's a game that you'd like go back to forever or play for a no, hundred hours or anything. It but it's a lovely relaxing time. You, but once yeah. you've built all that stuff, you then destroy all that stuff in like a reverse order and leave yes. it pristine and you clean. You have to yes, comp- you have to add all the infrastructure to re-green the land. Then you have to pack up yeah. and leave it. Completely wild, in that which is beautiful. lovely. In that beautiful, which is a lovely, which is a lovely second half to it. Yes, yeah, that's a really nice. I'm, a, I'm I really am. Yeah, you know, I, re- I really like nice games. No, we're getting a lot more you, of them now. If you come across Hotel Renovator, you mentioned that recently, didn't it's you? It's just House Flipper, but it's a hotel. So because you're not flipping the games, like you don't just get rid of the house after you're done with it. It just stays in your hotel. And you can have all sorts of themed rooms, like a Halloween room and a kid's room and like a, a really fancy room and shit. And you just like slowly unlock more floors of the hotel. And eventually you get like a sauna and a bar and everything. It's it's a fun time. It sounds like a fun time. It's, it's, it's such, it's like, it's... I'm not going to say it's better than a house flipper because I've not put enough time into it, but I will say it's a really nice variant on the theme and it's got like a lot of quality of life stuff like the actual tearing off the old, you know, gross shit, like the old wallpaper and like painting the walls is a lot easier. Like there is just a, you know, turn my turn my paint mode into paint this entire wall this colour. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to like you know paint every scene. So it's it's a lot easier. So like if you're into house flipper because you actually enjoy the process of slowly wallpapering sheet by sheet and you get some enjoyment out of that, you find that a relaxing process. It's not going to be for you. But if like you just want to you know play dress up a room and you want to make a room look really cool and you want to like streamline the process of clearing out the shit and putting up the new stuff, 
I think you'll have a nicer time with it than House Flipper. They're quite different in that regard, where the focus is. Yeah. Uh, and I had a lovely time with it. I just, a lot of these Flipper <laughs> games come out, and I, my mom was like, fucking, that World War II Rebuilder. And I, I always feel like, World War II they feel Rebuilder, like yeah. they're very like, oh, look how detailed it is. And you kind of go into it, and I'm like, oh, I can't read. Oh. Yeah, and it does something a bit. I, I, I... I must admit, as soon as I play any of them, I then just go back and play Fallout 4 for another yeah, few hours. Yeah, because they never do, they never Should detailed like... enough, I feel. Yeah, all that creative clutter mods and shit like that, where you're just building up just a beautiful, perfect place, and then you're like, yeah. yeah. And like That's Power Wash, that gives the detail clean up, much like Viscera did. But those games... Oh, does Starfield have settlement building? Yeah, they said it did in the original trailer, didn't they? I would be they said surprised it did. if it didn't, but I don't know if they said it. They... Or it's not to Somebody they Google, said somebody Google. Did. I remember in the thing. Yeah, but it might be a very simple, f- reduced form of it. Like, hey, you can just set up a camp that gives you access to some basic crafting. Or I want to build a sci-fi city. Like, we don't, we're, it's I doubt we're going to get that. It's the apparently. Um, what, you just build the thing and only 20 people move in? Uh, resource hunting. Oh. Fundamentals stay the same as Fallout 4's building system. You enter a build mode, you build stuff. Like Fallout 4, there's power, okay. there's production, there's crew. There's... You can build from the top down. I'm kind of... Oh, um, building from top down is interesting. Yeah, it's a, it seems to be the same structure as the... Yeah, but you don't need to, because you can just take the starting trait, you've got a mortgage, which is my favourite starting trait ever. There's some articles you've about got... how base building works in it. Yeah, you can you can have you can you know you can pick traits in games where like, you know, there's it's just like a little bonus fun yeah. roleplay thing about your character. Two of them that are available in Starfield are your parents are alive and they're just, they live in a house somewhere you could go and visit them. <laughs> and another one is you've got a mortgage. So you own a small starter <gasps> house, but like every month you get a certain amount taken out of your gold to cover the cost of the mortgage. <laughs> and 100%, I want to be the most boring man <laughs> in space. And straight away, I'm taking the traits for I've got a mortgage on my starter home and my mum lives over there and I go and visit her every Sunday. <laughs> Like this, I don't go out an adventure because I want to solve the mystery of how to save the universe. I'm going out there because I've got a mortgage and I need to keep up with it. Okay, I want to pay it down faster so I can get rid of some of the interest. All right, I've taken the I've taken the mortgage with unlimited overpayment. So if I just find a planet made of gold, I am sorted. All right, there's going to be no overpayment penalties for me. I made sensible choices, all right? But there's a risk that, you know, galactic interest rates might go up next month. So I need to make those overpayments (laughs) now. But I also need to factor in my tax implications, Mm -hmm. okay? I've got to make sure I actually pay the mortgage down in the right tax year. Because, you know, when you're in a... I really hope that there's this level of dumb bureaucracy. I want dumb bureaucracy in my star field. And also I want people to just be flung into space. (laughs) That's the two states. This is what I want out of Starfield. I want a dumb level of tax bureaucracy and I want stupid physics glitches. I want to build a space city. I want... My my perfect Starfield experience is I'm walking down the street to go and pay my mortgage and the bank gets flipped to the moon. (laughs) And as I'm approaching the bank, like a bird lands on it and that just... since the physics of the bank just flips off into the sky. And as a result of that, my house gets repossessed because the bank's not there anymore. The guys are, well, you should have paid your mortgage. I couldn't! The bank was missing! Because <laughs> a bird lands on it. That, that, that's what I want out of my Bethesda game. Hey, uh, my, my, my yeah. time timer on uh, chat GPT has expired. Oh, we can ask more things! Have... Okay, one, we have to ask it one thing, then we should wrap up. Oh, what's the title of this episode? Well, yes! I, I asked it, what, I asked it a question that episode. you wanted me to get it done ages ago, Dial. Oh, what right was that? Right at the end of the Paradox. Oh, uh, read that out loud, please. Chapter 72, The Resolution. Okay, it's 32 chapters. As the vortex of time swirled around him, William felt the sheer force of temporal storms trying to rip him apart. His journey through the ages had brought him face to face with the very nature of time and existence, but it had all come down to this moment. As he touched the time disruption device in his trembling hands, he knew he had to make a choice. He thought back to his encounters with his... Push the button, William! He's encounters with the mysterious time traveler Cassandra who had guided him along the way. She had shown him the devastating consequences of creating paradoxes, how the fabric of time itself could unravel if left unchecked. He remembered her warm smile and the wisdom of her eyes and she had knowledge with them. Cassandra had sacrificed herself to save the timeline, throwing herself into the paradox loop that created by their actions. Her brave decision had brought William the time needed to reach the point, but it had come at a high price. William looked down at the time disruption device, the glowing orb pulsed with an odd worldly energy, ready to complete its purpose. 
Up, oh, yeah. Point he knew that the act activating the device would erase all the paradoxes they had created and restore balance to the timeline, but it also erased the memory of the journey together in Cass of Cassandra herself. With every heart, he pressed the button and the time disruption device hummed to life. As the vortex of time began to stabilize, William felt the familiar tug of being pulled through time. He knew that he would soon find himself back in his only era with no recollection of the adventure that had brought him here. As the world around him blurred, he caught a glimpse of a figure standing in the distance. It was Cassandra, smiling at him, as if to reassure him that he was making the right choice, and then just as suddenly she vanished. And it, it is writing a full chapter of a book. It's, key, it is, it's still writing it. It's going quite long. Cool. Well, I don't have any characters called that, and that's not the ending, so thank fuck. Also, I mean, Cassandra is a good name for a character in a time travel book where someone might have access to future information. No, it reminds me of that's Rodney. Good. Cassandra and Rodney, that's well, just I, I, together for everyone. It's got to go on aside from the name. Plus, you know, obviously, it's, it's gone for the wrong ending as well, which is, you know, that's the obvious ending that every book's going to have. I want to have one ending where the hero's like, no, fuck it, I'm making the fucking selfish choice. Okay. Uh, fuck time. I want to remember my ex-girlfriend who's just tossed herself in the time loop. Okay. Fuck it. Fuck you. Okay. Fuck right. continuity. So you want the last fuck of universe. us but with time for travel. An <laughs> episode of the No Cube, no cube Podcast podcasts well, um, do we have to in, tell it what's well, in what the I, episode in which, or uh, we, we discuss right at puppetry of the penis 20... puppetry of the penis um chat gpt video games we did discuss video games and chat gpt yeah upcoming video games the resident evil 4 demo yeah john's football camp experience football camp yep yeah, football camp we're in a mental football, football camp. camp um I couldn't video games, Chat GPT football camp. What else was the other one? I won the lottery. The lottery and Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4. Yeah. Got a lot right, done. A funny title for an episode. There we go. This, this, better, this better be spectacular, right, Chat short, GPT. funny title for the episode of an Azneki podcast, which is just... All right. Here we go. This is it. This is the go. finale of this episode. Be Thanks for coming, this everybody. Be, be Matt's going to read this and then we'll be out. <laughs> All right, that's the ending. That's the ending. So Matt's going to read this, and then we're out. So John, say goodbye. And if it's not the ending that was on this episode, you know it's shit. Yep. See you later, everybody. <laughs> Genital gymnastics, gaming galore, and campy chats. A jumble joyride of joviality. <laughs> <laughs> so shit. <laughs> so fucking abysmal. Bye!